So it was hope that led me to believe that we could change as humans, that we could find balance in ourselves and help others to find balance in themselves, so that we together can create a life of peace and experience true bliss. And that to me is truth. This is the very thing that was trying to stand between the me that released this video and the me that did not. Yes, coffee, new style. Satyagraha. 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 This word has been developed amongst others by Mahatma Gandhi. And so far I have read most of an autobiography or the story of my experiments with truth. Of course, Mahatma was not his name. It was a name that was given to him because of the work that he did. Purely due to his devotion to truth. <laughs> and now we, as spiritual warriors, must choose our path. And my path has been one of strength because I have been made weak. And so one thing I have started doing is reading and then holding this vok with my left hand occasionally like this. And then you read like that. Because I have a clear imbalance in my left feminine side And coffee is something that I believe activates this forceful masculine side. Now, I'm not going to do this all the time. What I wanted to do was just give you something to work with and try to understand. Please also try to understand that this book has been written by Gandhi. But now let's check. It has probably been translated, which I often dislike, but there's no point for me to read anything else than the introduction, possibly. Now, what I also would like to tell you is that every time I feel like doing something, it turns into, boy, I hate doing it. Which means that... Everything and anything that you would do requires strength. Reading books requires strength. Applying what you have read in these books into your own life and figuring out in which way it can work for you also requires strength because you must 
actively distance yourself from the experiences of the author and make your own. And that's what it truly means to be a learned man. You may read what others have come up with, so you may read one of my books, but the clear message that always seeps onto the page is do your own shit. Do you, it's called freedom. I don't like Chris Webby anymore because he's treating women with disrespect, which I believe I have never done. What he does, so he's using his fame to get women to have sex with him, and then he throws them away, broken and used, like toilet paper, which I also don't use in my own home, because I use water rather than trees that have been turned into waste. Okay, of course paper is the same thing, but at least I can read the words of another man. Now I can say a lot in and out of myself, I can just sit here and talk. I just want to read a part of... Now I sit here, I really don't want to do it, because it starts to annoy you. Yeah, I get it. It's annoying to be shown what you fail to see. And what you fail to see is that you have been neglecting your spiritual work. So it is not me that you think you hate. It's just the resistance you've put up in yourself against other people's teachings because you adopted the mentality that you're the best guy around or the best woman and that's just copying everyone else. So every state tries to portray itself as the best thing around. So we're better than China and China is better than original. It's just words, man, because we're all the same. At the end of the day, we all gotta eat, and we all gotta shit. And even Voldemort and Hitler had to do this. So you're no exception. So drinking coffee clearly activates my shadow and brings me into a different state of consciousness, which makes coffee clearly a psychedelic substance. How about that? How about your the psychedelic substance? Okay, I really wanted to read. Um, I hate reading. Wow, maybe I should go on a coffee fast again. I've already done so. Satyagraha. I hate the word. I hate the word. It's just like... I mean, we talk about a non-violent resistance here. But there is violence even without physical force. I perceive violence in the way we speak. Okay? Yeah, I cannot do this. I cannot read this to you. You gotta read it yourself, man. If you wanna know what he has to say, you just gotta read it yourself, you know? I'm not your damn parrot. I cannot repeat to you what he said, because I already know what he says. I mean, I will read it, possibly, or I'll just keep the book as a reminder that he already did this. You know, that's what he did. Well, that's what I do. I sit here and I give you shit. So, what's the real lesson here? I've worked on my left side, so I can drink comfortably, like this. Although I have been raised as right-handed, 
you can see me do this. So I've been working on my own personal stuff, because Gandhi knew very little about pornography. He never talked about masturbation. So Gandhi has lived in different times. I cannot say when he died. Did he know of the existence of the internet? Probably not. I think Gandhi had a real shadow. He had a real shadow. And now I'm feeling something. This is voodoo, by the way. People stabbing your back. How does it work? Well, yesterday I gave someone a hug. And today I can feel it. So I really want to stop touching people because they just loom around and then they imagine killing me or something. You know that kind of stuff works. It really happens all the damn time. Which is why I stay away from people. Now what is this? I really clearly feel like somebody wants me to stop reading things. And that's the message. If you really felt like it, you just got to do it and get rid of this fucker. Okay? Because in the end, it's just myself, what I choose. So yeah. Yeah, I cannot read. Wait. I have to sit like this because of the light. You see? I'm not doing this. Now I can do this. You know, I cannot tell you how heavy this is. But it's made of stone. It's the stone line. And it's, I think, like cast iron or something. You know, I, for me, this works. Absolutely. I don't have to do this all the time. But if I do it once in a while, I strengthen my left side and I counterbalance the heaviness of my warrior. Satyagraha is literally holding on to truth and it means therefore truth force. Truth is soul or spirit. It is therefore known as soul force. It excludes the use of violence because man is not capable of knowing the absolute truth and therefore not competent to punish. The word was coined in South Africa to distinguish the non-violent resistance of the Indians of South Africa from the contemporary passive resistance of the suffragettes and others. Heavy words. It is not conceived as a weapon of the weak. It is not conceived as a weapon of the weak. So you see... I think we must find ways to communicate differently or you just must read more stuff like other than Harry Potter. But just words will never teach you. You've got to make your experiences, which is why I'm also preparing myself to go for a hike again. The word was coined in South Africa to, to distinguish the nonviolent resistance of the Indians of South Africa from the contemporary. Contemporary. So, temporary is something that happens just temporary. Temporarily. And then, what is then contemporary? And what is the suffragettes? Probably from the ones that suffered. Passive resistance of a suffragette. Yeah, whatever. Passive resistance is used in the orthodox English sense and covers the suffragette movement as well as the resistance of the nonconformists. You gotta really spend time with this stuff. Passive resistance has been conceived and is regarded as a weapon of the weak. Whilst it avoids violence being not open to the weak, it does not exclude its use if, in the opinion of a passive resistor, the occasion demands it. 
However, it has always been distinguished from armed resistance and its application was at one time confined to Christian martyrs. Christian martyrs. Yeah, I mean, that's like probably playing into the hands of Jesus, Christ. Whereas Christ, of course, <laughs> is derived from Christ, which is the consciousness, which is the place in your heart, which is what makes the entire Christian religion a complete bullshit religion, which every religion is, because religion is clinging, and we're about moving on, okay? We're about moving on away from these doctrines, back to what we once were. So Vikings were never violent. They were men of nature and women of nature. And they lived in nature. And they probably did use mushrooms. And they probably did spend a lot of time in the cold, as they largely came from Norway. But they clearly lived with nature and according to the laws of nature. And that's where I'm trying to get back to, just a simple life. Civil disobedience is civil breach of unmoral statutory enactments. Yeah, whatever. The expression was, so far as I am aware, coined by Thoreau to signify his own resistance to the laws of the slave state. He has left a masterly treatise on the duty of civil disobedience. But Thoreau was not perhaps an out-and-out -out champion of nonviolence. Probably also Thoreau limited his breach of statutory laws to the revenue law, that is, payment of taxes. You know, I dot, E dot, it's like that is. Whereas the term civil disobedience as practiced in 1919 covered a breach of any statutory and unmoral law. It signified the resistor's outlawry in a civil, that is, non-violent manner. He invoked the sanctions of the law and cheerfully suffered imprisonment. It is a branch of Satyagraha. Non-cooperation predominantly implies withdrawing of cooperation from the state that in the non-cooperator's view has become corrupt and excludes civil disobedience of the fierce type described above. I wonder if we can find this anywhere today. <clears throat> By its very nature, non-cooperation is even open to children of understanding and can be safely practiced by the masses, the mob, <laughs> that was me. Civil disobedience presupposes the habit of willing obedience to laws without fear of their sanctions. It can therefore be practiced only as a last resort. Wait, what? and by a select few in the first instance at any rate. What? non cooperate Yes, yeah, so what it means is that you stop cooperating with he who is corrupt. Yeah. You just stop cooperating with he who is corrupt because you have seen the corruption. And so you just start to resist, but without violence, you just stop participating in that which you deem as corrupt because you're still the center of your own deductions. And as such, you must choose actively. So if you feel like Netflix is corrupting you, you know, I'm just saying, it's just an example, or Amazon, or is corrupting the earth and nature, 
then you can just stop participating in it. And that's then your personal choice, and you know, that means freedom. If it's your choice and you make it, then it's a free choice, and then it's freedom. And once you've been freed of spending time with such services, you can then feel free to do other things, such as read books, or go hiking, yeah? Or spend a night in the forest if you want. But just do whatever you want, you know? I'm still working to the night in the forest. Um, yeah. Civil disobedience presupposes the habit of willing obedience to laws without fear of their sanctions. Civil disobedience presupposes the habit of willing obedience to laws without fear of their sanctions. What the fuck? I mean, if you talk like this, nobody can ever understand you. Civil disobedience. What? Non-cooperation predominantly implies withdrawing of cooperation from the state that in the non-cooperator's view, right? So Gandhi then sees himself as a non-cooperator, apparently. That, okay, non-cooperation predominantly implies withdrawing of cooperation from the state that in the non-cooperator's view has become corrupt and excludes civil disobedience. But what is civil disobedience? Ah. Whereas the term, wait, civil is, disobedience is civil breach of unmoral statutory enactments. Sorry, man, but nobody will ever understand what you're saying in here. It's just bullshit. I mean, civil disobedience is civil breach of unmoral statutory enactments. The expression was, so far as I am aware, coined by Thoreau to signify his own resistance to the laws of a slave state. Whereas the term civil covered a breach of any statutory and unmoral law. I mean, civil is just whatever, and then disobedience. You see, that's why I often don't like reading stuff like this. But you can, this can be a riddle. You're trying to understand it. So disobedience clearly means not obeying. And civil... Sorry, but it's like sometimes it's just too much. Breaks your mind. Non cooperation predominantly implies. Predominantly. It's like mainly, right? Implies withdrawing of cooperation from the state that in the non cooperator's view has become corrupt and excludes civil disobedience of the fierce type described above. Okay, so it means civil disobedience, but without force. Okay, that's how I understand it. Civil disobedience just means you just disobey whatever has been tried to push upon you because you think that maybe the state is corrupt. And so you stop participating. Yeah, so you stop cooperating. And now it continues. By its very nature, non-cooperation is even open to children of understanding. And can be safely practiced by the masses. Yeah, of course, children can understand this. You know, if you think this is bad, stop doing it. So it's just 
porn, right? If you think it's bad, you know, however fickle your thought is, if you think it's bad, stop doing it. And if it takes you 10 years, you know, you just gotta stop. Civil disobedience presupposes, presupposes. So it's like, I suppose we should do this. And if it says presupposes, it says like, it's just like that, right? I mean, presuppose, I presuppose. It's just, it's before the supposing. So it's not a supposition. It's just like that. It's a fact. The habit of willing obedience. Oh, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> of willing obedience to laws without fear of their sanctions. But I gotta understand this. Presupposes the habit of willing obedience to laws without fear of their sanctions. Civil disobedience presupposes the habit of, now that I don't understand, willing obedience to laws? Ah! Ah, okay. So, what civil disobedience and satyagraha means is that you follow laws because you believe in them and not because you're afraid to be punished, yeah? So you choose out of your own free will to do something to get some kind of medical treatment, not because you're afraid to be punished if you fail to follow these, you know, all these laws are man-made. If you follow the laws of nature, then there is no real punishment, you just gotta survive. <laughs> Which makes you strong. Well, punishment makes you weak. Unless you grow out of it. it Presuppose the habit of willing obedience to laws. Yeah, you will, you actively choose to obey without being afraid to be punished. Yes? Okay. So it's like in school, you are being forced to hand in an assignment, because if you don't do so, you will be punished. Which is why school is clearly violent towards children, because they're being forced to learn things that they may not want to learn. But of course, you could just say, I don't see bad grades as punishment. But as a child, it's very hard without the support of the parents, of course, to go through with such a mentality. Okay, I think we got that straight now, okay? Move on to the next sentence. It can therefore be practiced only as a last resort and by a select few in the first instance at any rate. What? Okay, it can therefore be practiced only as a last resort and by a select few in the first instance at any rate. You see, that I don't understand as a last resort. Why does he say that? What do you mean as a last resort? I mean, of course, if you start to disobey rules that are being forced upon you with the club, say like, you do this or you get punished, then you better know how to stand your ground. Because if you start resisting, you know, then you're like a stick, right? And you better be a strong stick, because otherwise, you know, they're gonna bend you from two sides and you're gonna snap. So you have to be, again, unbendable. Because there's now two opposing forces, and one tries to overtake the other. 
And that can be then the Fire Lord against Aang, and that can be your shadow against your light. It's like, I hate and I love, or I, I love and I hate. Oh yeah, it's just the way it is. So sometimes you just have to really push through until you understand what is being said. You know, it's easier to sit like this if I don't record myself, because if I feel like, you know, I'm being recorded, I always feel like sitting like this. Because if people think you're strong, they try to break you. It's true, I have witnessed it myself. I was strong as a child and they tried to break me. But I found my way out. Non-cooperation to, like civil disobedience, is a branch of Satyagraha which includes all non-violent resistance for the vindication of truth. Yes. You see, some people, they just read it and they just suck up the words and then they repeat them. You really gotta spend time with these things and try to understand them. Because otherwise it's worthless. It's worthless. Because you just become a parrot if you just read through this and suck it all up. It's like, you know, I want the words, I want the words. You don't want truth, you just want the words. And then you can write a book about non-violence and it's just based on words. You know, if I would write a book about it, I'll first make my experiences, which is why for Mentality of a Warrior, I bring you first-hand experience from myself and that I have done in every book. And so I have for the Book of Fear, which I had, I think, one year I studied fear before writing the book. While other people, if they would write a book about fear, instead of studying it with their mind by making experiences and then observing oneself, you know, they would just read books about fear and then write a book about fear. But for me, it was clear that I needed the experience in order to write about it. Because me being in the observer can perceive what happens in relation to fear, to this being called Christopher. And that's just what I do. And you just gotta do what you do. I had read in some books on vegetarianism that salt was not a necessary article of diet for man. That on the contrary, saltless diet was better for health. I had deduced Okay, saltless diet. What you gotta understand is that your bones are made from materials and if you turn yourself into the Dead Sea which has a lot of salt in it, it will deteriorate your bone structure. So I never talk about saltless diet. I would say just reduce it, take less, and then see how that feels like. That's just what I feel. I'm more about transitioning. Instead of just stopping totally, I try to transition away from something or someone and if someone is like, it's maybe also something else, maybe it's just me. But I know that people, a lot of people do voodoo subconsciously. Because voodoo is just intent and focus. It's where you send your energy and how you send it. So there's like good voodoo and bad voodoo. It's like shadow voodoo. And then there's like the light voodoo. But then there's the real voodoo, which just sees what is happening in its entirety. And then you intervene. So Gandhi clearly did voodoo. I mean, look at his life. If you really look at it, what he did, 
he was dealing, you know, he induced a lot of chaos. So he clearly had a lot of shadow and a lot of light, but he also had balance. And that's what separated him from most other people, because he never gave in, never truly gave in to the violence. I have read now a bit of him, and what I know is that, of course, there's violence in him, but he always made sure to take his time. Okay, that's all I have for now. Of course, I could, you know, that's the problem I have to myself. Because now I'm just alone here. And if I don't speak, I also start feeling lonely. And that's just a problem. Of also transitioning from yesterday I visited my dear mother for birthday, my birthday. And so now I'm back here and it's so easy to cling to words because silence can be really dreadful. And I have experienced violent tendencies towards myself when I'm alone and that includes masturbation. It's the sapping out of your own life force and that includes the biting of fingernails or the wish to punch against walls. And so I know about the shadow and I know about violence, yet I am more prone to violence against myself. And so a part of me clearly wishes also to have a dog, while there is another part that feels like it would be a distraction of this kind of experience that I have alone in this room. And I think we can all understand this, that if you spend so much time alone, you wish for company, but if there were a dog here, and I'd have to clean more often. But at the same time, I would have company. So it's often a really hard choice to make and then to say, do you really want this kind of a life where you're just alone all the time and creating content do I really need a dog? I cannot say any longer. In certain ways I have given up responsibility for certain choices and I just leave it up to truth and to my life to show me where I'm gonna get. And all I can do at the moment is continue to learn to be as non-phony as I can be and then make a choice. And that's tough, of course, because today I could have run away from this place, could have gone to the boulder hall again, but what would I do there? I mean, I could have gone to boulder, but to me it would be a waste of time because if I've got nothing to upload there because they've got internet, I feel like it's useless. So I'd rather stay here and do this and then keep working on my new book Crazy Wisdom 2, which is the second in the series of possibly three that has been derived from the articles I posted on medium.com.
Whereas my account has been closed down because I posted an article on transgender where I just said, you know, I think we need men and women. And I think we should communicate that. And they just shut me down for it. And I just took it as an opportunity to save all the articles and then put them into books. And the first one is then Crazy Wisdom 1, as easy as possible. And the second one is Crazy Wisdom 2, um, something with, yeah, I can't remember the subtitle, something with a slime, living in a valley of slime or something. And that's all I had to say on this. But what else I got to say is that I do seek strength. For myself also. Because I need to be strong in this kind of life. So spirituality is also a selfish way, in a sense. But the question is, what do you... For what do you seek strength? And the answer should be for the people, for nature and for life itself. So yesterday I have watched The Dark Crystal and what The Dark Crystal talks about it talks about separation and it talks about merging back into balance and you have to start by yourself to find your own balance again And I cannot say who are the good guys and who are the bad guys, but I just look at what I see. And what I see is that there is a clear difference between a news reporter, if you just look at him, facial features, the way they're dressed, and like somebody you find hiking barefoot in the Bavarian forest. There's a clear difference between city people and country people. And there's a clear difference between country people and forest people. Now we are on the verge of changing ourselves because of recent events which I can only perceive as violent. And my choices have brought me further into the position where I feel like I need to understand violence and where it's coming from and how to work with it to a much higher degree. But I feel fear, I perceive it, I often wish to run away. This prison here, where I can find myself in, is also a sanctuary, because there's no internet. I've got food which keeps me alive and keeps me working. So I do rely on certain things, such as coffee, to keep going, simply because we're all running out of time. And I'm running out of time. And the society is very fast, because everyone drinks coffee and eats sugar. I feel like I have stopped now with the eating of sugar 
which is a real stretch from where I come from. So yesterday I have denied cake and I have stuck with the cheese because that's what I choose because I have learned that sugar is bad for your teeth which means that sugar is bad for your spirit which means then I can simply breathe more freely. And now I'm opening up once more because I have stayed here. I've stayed here. I'm opening up to slacklining. But that's also a real stretch for me personally because I'm alone. Why would I go slacklining? Where would I go slacklining? When would I go slacklining? How long would I go slacklining? And then why would I go slacklining? So I'm constantly trying to figure out what is the lie and what is the truth, mostly for myself. And now that I'm here and I have built up the energy, I actually feel reluctant to leave. Because that's also what we got to learn. If you build up the energy, sometimes it is important to hold it. So I feel like leaving the house would be a distraction at this point. Because it feels cold and empty in here. And now I feel warm and comfortable. And if I leave, I feel like running away. So maybe I just should stay here. And just focus on making more art. Or I just take my camera and I go for a hike. And then I come back and then I have pictures and I can make art with them. But it's always a challenge to leave the house, especially now. Because I feel so reluctant to stop producing content and releasing it on YouTube. And I have asked myself, whether I should just pile it all up. And release it. Next year. It's so difficult to say at this stage. Do you see what I'm doing now? I'm clinging to the camera because it's just too much. Because now here I feel good in the center. And that then is meditation, of course. I have done a lot of work to balance. Which is why I am reluctant. To leave.
So one form of, med of meditation is to just relax into yourself. And in order to relax into yourself, it is important to strengthen and harden your body and work out any weaknesses. So do your planks, do your breathing, stop smoking. If you drink a coffee, then do something useful with it. If it can boost you to sit in a meditative posture for an hour, then do it. And then seize the moment and do something with it. So next week on Saturday, I'm going to the Boulder Hall. And until then, I have to somehow persist in staying alive. But I also feel reluctant to keep on producing more and more art. But at the same time, what else am I supposed to do? And the thing is, you know, I am now at this stage of my life, 35. And you think like 50 years from now, 30 years from now, it's an eternity. I mean, it's just around the corner, but it's an eternity. So why I'm so reluctant to keep on giving on Instagram is because I'm afraid that people will rely on it too much. Which is why to me, it's much better to just post every two weeks or once in a while. And it's also something that pushes me to always keep being creative. But if I'm too focused on creating for Instagram, then I will not sit here and do crochet. But at the same time, of course, I can do crochet and then film myself. But that's also a distraction from myself again. Because if I film every part of my life, all the time, then I will become a slave. And that's basically what the Dark Crystal also talks about. Because what they use to extract the life's essence of these people that they then enslaved was, I think, the crystal itself or something. And what the crystal is, is your phone, is your camera, is your TV, is your radio. That's what extracts energy from you and feeds something else. And so is your bank account and so is everything else. So you go and work for money and then you use the money to buy things that keep alive institutions that suck the earth dry. So you work for money in exchange for life force, you get now money and you give your life's forth to receive money and then you take the money and buy a Netflix account and that's then where your life forth is going instead of into your children or the things that you love. So instead of your life force going into learning how to move like a true human, your life force goes into sitting on a couch eating chips and escaping feeling miserable. So in order to do this and to feel like it's time to do this, I need to make an effort. I need to work on my strength and my stability.
and I have to become like iron. Okay? And then I can feel weird about being like this. But what does this show you? Sometimes I need to sit and relax. And then I have enough energy to film. Go for a hike. But sometimes I need to test this. Right? I need to see that I can still do this. But I also realized that sometimes you have to do something first to get to the next phase. So before I could really let go of watching porn, I had to really look at porn and understand what it does and what it is and that it's clearly not what I want. And that's then transitioning into the next phase of my life, which is then being together with my wife, which is weird because why is my life so different from everyone else? And then you can say, well, you just want to be different, while it is more likely to say that I just am. <laughs> you see what I mean? I just wanted to remember how we once were, how life used to be like, and this feels so nice. Um, You just have to get to that point. So start exchanging smoking a joint for doing this. That's what I've done. Because before I always had to smoke first and then I would do this and then I just remembered to breathe. So while you're smoking, you already start building up strength. So when you smoke, and normally you would watch a movie, now you just sit in silence until an idea starts to manifest. And when you've got the idea, you start to do it. However stupid it seems, that's how I did it. When I was in South Africa, where I started smoking pure cannabis, I smoked, or dacha they called it, it was not really like cannabis. I smoked and suddenly I would do photography, I would do often and sometimes I did breath work, sometimes I did slack lining, but then I got sick of just smoking always because, you know, if I wanted to do things and I had to smoke to do it, so I transitioned away from the smoking and into the just doing it so that you can just do it. But now I drank a coffee. But I also choose to do this because I just want to stop smoking. And when it's heavy, I just breathe. Because often I smoked because I actually wanted to breathe. So you just stop with the smoking and you just breathe instead. You know? You just keep sighing instead of into yourself, out of yourself. And then you practice. Self-restraint, which is also one of Gandhi's teachings. And for some reason, what I want to do right now is just keep giving these videos occasionally. Because I find it important to show where I'm at. And then for next year, I can produce something else. You know, I can make like art videos and then occasionally film myself when I do something. I think that's better for myself because then I can make lots of art, channel it into YouTube, find new ways to express myself and then just live my life. And then I can say, I 
think that's very good. And now I have also prepared a lot of content already, which is my art. But this is just important, I think, to just show that I do still progress and that I never stopped. It's just hard to say. I think what I like for YouTube is to do like poetry videos, like short, kind of short things, and then occasionally longer ones. But I also feel like there's so much stuff on there that anyone can spend lots of time if they wanted to. Like, nobody is being forced. But if you want to, you can. And I am certain that this will still change. But it really depends on the direction of my own life and where it's going. So I do intend to keep showing what I'm doing, but I can never see myself doing this for the rest of my life, because it's also a real distraction. And if my wife would be here now, I'd be sure to put the camera away. And I think what I'm starting to realize is that for YouTube it's also okay to just do shorter videos. Because now this is like a replacement. Because there's nobody here. So I use the camera to just have a conversation with myself and to show you what it's like and how hard it can be to be alone. But that's then what I have taken upon myself, where I've said I'm just going to show how you can work out your own stuff. So this is clearly advertisement. And I have not seen that anyone has really shown interest into my content. Some people do leave likes occasionally but I have not seen anyone watching entire videos. That's what it seems like. But statistics can be portrayed. So I have no idea what it's really like, but I do believe that book sales are my safest inclination for truth. So, receiving emails and selling books is probably what is going to show me what is really happening. So it may be that the statistics are still true. And they're simply not yet a market because I've just... I've just uh, created or described to you what I'm trying to do here, which is introduce a new product, which is yourself. Which is your path to freedom and liberation. Which is clearly something a lot of people are afraid of because we live in a society that is fond of clinging and oppression. Ah, wow. You see, so I did drink a coffee with black cardamom, cinnamon, almond and oat milk, a double shot espresso that I made with my Bialetti and then I took black cardamom pods, scrambled up, got it from a kind of Indian Thai shop and then I heated up the oat and the almond milk with black cardamom and 
cinnamon and a bit of water. And then I make my coffee in the Bialetti. Then I mix it both together and then I drank it. And now I do all of this, but it's always... I prepared myself after waking up at around 11 to 12. It took me probably an hour to get to this place. So I cleaned the kitchen a little, took a photograph, <laughs> wore a new sweater, and then went in my head through the day. Okay. Okay. It's the opening of the heart space that we're working on here, okay? You open it for everyone else. This is one of the practices I started to do. Okay? So I just focus on what I do and then I keep doing it. Reality is different than what you think it is. It's constantly changing.
So yes. I'd rather live like this and practice strength and stability. Always try to work on both sides. Just see where it leads you. I just don't know what's happening. So when the pressure gets too much, get back your flow. See the light and then reach for it. For that is what shamans have always known. Please remember to listen. Hi, my name is Christopher. And I'm here to talk about, I'm just gonna say the word without shitting my pants again, Satyagraha, okay? That's a non-violent resistance. And yesterday I had an experience just by recording myself and drinking a coffee previously where I nearly shat my pants. And now what we have to understand is that we're talking about freedom of speech here, that I am allowed to talk about these topics. But as I progress and I talk more about these things, I realize how much fear is clinging to these topics. And that is what I can say disappoints me to a certain degree and how so well because if I want to feel free and raise my children in a society that should want me to be free that should want me to be happy and to feel at peace then how am I supposed to do this if I feel, and I am, I would say, if you look at the whole of any kind of society, I'm probably one of the few people who talks about these things. And yesterday, it was just a bunch of coincidences. I was here, I drank the coffee, I went to my laptop, I uploaded the videos that I have recorded. And suddenly I heard like a chopper, like pop, 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 pop. And I went to the window and I looked outside and there was the chopper and he was just going like in an angle around my apartment or so it seemed. And suddenly I felt this fear bubbling up in myself. Like I cannot imagine how much fear I felt in that moment, in that very instance. And so right now, because what I did then is I realized I have to leave the apartment because if I feel so afraid of being abducted and people coming and injecting stuff into me, which is what I simply refuse, I don't want it. And that's my opinion, that's how I feel, I just don't want it because it's to me almost a form of rape. Okay, and so I felt this fear. I'm gonna do the same thing as yesterday. No, nope. I'm not gonna do the same thing as yesterday. I'm gonna take garam masala <laughs> aromatic spice blend. And what I'm doing at the moment is I'm experimenting also with fear. So I wanna know 
what's happening. I want to know if what I experience is really the truth. So yesterday was this chopper and I felt like, oh my God, I'm going to be abducted because I talked about nonviolent resistance and civil disobedience and stuff like that. And so I went, picked my stuff, took my camera, and then I went for a hike. And maybe it was good that it happened this way. And maybe I should have just left the house without feeling like, you know, there's like a SWAT team going to take me. But that's just how I felt like, simply by recording a video and then uploading it and then there was this fear, like this deep fear. And then I can never say, is this fear me? Is this fear someone else? Because we are connected to each other because this is spiritual advice from a barbarian lunatic. And you may be experiencing emotions from other people that sit at home and are afraid or they have fear and then they project it onto you. You know, it's like going on a holiday and then like feeling this anxiety of calling your parents. But you're on holiday, man. It's like clearly not your anxiety. It's probably your mother's or father's anxiety. Is he doing well? Yeah, and then you can call him every day and forget about your holiday. I mean, that's basically what this is. A friend made this. It's self-made. He bought like a thing of steel and then he cut it into shape. It's well made. But you gotta get, you gotta have time to do this. You gotta get your time back. She just did it. And it's amazing. And I'm trying to get to the place where I can crochet again. I wanted to crochet a half for myself. Or just do something else. So, what I'm experiencing is what any of us may experience if they start dabbling with their ideas of freedom and trying to find ways how to free themselves because we do live in a world that exaggerates a lot. I mean, it's funny how that one came out. A lot of things, hey, I got that one. It's coffee. Got that from home. So today, this is crazy to me, because yesterday I did the same thing. This is black cardamom. I really, I really felt like, and then I just left the house and I just went for a hike. And I walked around and I took pictures because I said, I've done nothing, I've done nothing. I'm just working with fear. And that's what we all gotta understand. We just need to start working with fear. Instead of just sitting around at home like, <laughs> clinging to it, you just start to do something. And so if we talk about Sat Yavraha, which is the non-violent resistance then, or you saying, I believe the state is corrupt, I wish to change something. Yeah, okay, but how is this change gonna look like? Because nobody wants violence, because what we want is peace for children, our inner children. But in order to make that a possibility, you first have to find peace in yourself. And so, as I was on that hike and I was thinking about what I was doing, I realized Wait a second, I mean, why do I feel like I'm being haunted? Because if I look at the state, then they should want to have an interest in someone like me, who doesn't say, hey, I feel raped, because, you know, people tried to force 
me to do something that I don't want to do. So they try to force an injection upon me. I refused at the time because I could. Because I had nothing like, this is my job. So I could just stay at home and keep working from home. But there are people, and I have talked to a lot of people that feel really, really raped, like emotionally raped. And if you feel like this, then this may turn into hate. And also the fear of it happening again, or maybe such as in my case, that it could happen at all. That I will be forced at some point to accept their solutions, while my solution is this. I go for a hike, I take pictures, I share it with people that feel terrible about themselves and I talk to them about diet and breathing and how to, for example, drink a coffee and then just see like a very specific kind of coffee, like such as the one that I'm making now. I'm talking about a heavy topic and I'm preparing this beverage at the same time, which means that I am dealing with these energies. Because that's who I am. You know, I have taken responsibility for my abilities. And my abilities may be in the shamanic realm. Clearly, I am an energy worker. And this is what I can do for society to help. Because people are clearly at a loss. They're clearly just running after money. And life itself has no real value to them anymore. What they want is like sales, 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 and that comes at the cost of nature, and that comes at the cost of life itself. So why do I have to feel anxious about talking about these topics? Well, having watched The Dark Crystal the other day, I have come to realize that I don't really know who is who anymore. So I have been working with these things. With these emotions and with myself for such a long time. That I have kind of lost track of who is who anymore. Because the people that I considered to be friends turned out to be kind of phony. turned out to be kind of phony and so I just let go of them and I mean if there's people here that can talk about drones and advertise them I'm sure I can talk about fear and bring it in connection with non-violence because I believe that any politician should want this they should want someone to talk about these things and to be able to communicate to them what the people want and then find solutions for this. I mean, they should want me to do this if they had the people's best interests at heart. They should say, I think we need someone who lives amongst the people and who can speak for them because forcing them to do something that they do not want is clearly not what we have in mind because we too are humans, we too have children and we should understand how parents feel that live in this kind of a world and cannot just get paid by tax money but that have to work and that find solace in mingling with other people and so what I'm communicating to you is the the idea of civil disobedience or you know that sounds very harsh that term in itself it sounds like you know I'm gonna like ah! well it's not what I'm doing you know it's not what I'm doing I'm not standing there and I'm not forcing anyone to listen to this I just talk about this with my own voice and with my strength that I also receive from nature, I would say. And then I simply see, okay, where am I going with this? Because I don't know. All I know is that I'm talking here. 
and all I know is that I should not have to feel such an incredible amount of fear of being abducted just by talking about these topics. And that's why I simply say, hey, you know, I'm not really doing anything. I'm not running a mock. I don't sell weapons to other countries, you know? I don't tell you I'm gonna take away your freedom unless you, you know, get a shot. It's like, I mean, these things, in my opinion, just needed to change. And so I started to change them for myself because I felt like I needed to be someone else. I needed to show what the alternative looks like because otherwise if we just talk about the alternative like here in Germany there's like the alternative for Germany it's like a, a political party but nobody's really sure what they want because what they want is power they just want to do the same thing um, that everyone else was. They just want to be in the position of power. But then what are they going to do? So people are often like really afraid about alternative solutions that come from somewhere else than the state. But we clearly have to see now, and this is why of course I feel a lot of fear or the people I'm involved with, because nobody's alone. You know, but the thing is that you may feel fear. I mean, I have a phone in this apartment. How can I know that I'm not being, you know, that nobody's listening to me? How can I know that in this camera, there's not like some kind of thing that is being transmitted? How can I know I'm not being observed by the state or something? You know, I always think nobody takes me seriously. But I take myself very seriously because I've got emotions and I've got a heart and I feel things. And I remember how I felt like as a child being pushed around and always being told to sit and to chill and I just wanted to move and so I started moving and I started talking about the things that scare me and I started to turn off my radiator in winter because I think it's a waste of energy but of course if there's like hundreds of people like me now in a kind of a system that is based on making money by people turning on their radiator well then they're gonna have less money but if they have less money, then they have less resources to oppress the people. Because that's what they have clearly shown. That they have no interest in me as an emotional being. What they have an interest in is me as the energy giver. And that's basically what is being shown in the dark crystal. Exactly that image. You sit at home, you look into your phone, you watch a movie energy is being sucked out of you and where is this energy going it's going to you know like servers it's going into yeah just making more money it's going into all kinds of things but you cannot see them it's nothing you will ever have because now it's in netflix now it's in amazon now it's in yeah so you buy with Amazon, but you say, save the Amazon. <laughs> it's like, it's controversial, my friend. It makes no sense. So then, what makes no sense to me is the idea that I should be clinging to the edge of my seat, while until now, there has been no clear evidence in my life that police officers or anyone has any kind of interest in me. I mean, I have been once in a situation where I was locked up somewhere, just, you know, I went for a walk in Amsterdam and 
I was locked up somewhere. It was just a stupid coincidence. Because I, I never break any laws. So I have a clean slate. You know, I'm talking for peace. I'm talking for peace and that's what we should want. Like even the people on top should want this. Because there is no top. We're all here. But now it's like, we've got these people that wield all the power and that can tell the police to do what they want them to do, you know, and then they're just clubbing at the people at the bottom and then they say, give us more money, give us more money because I want another Mercedes Benz or something, you know, give us more money. I mean, there's something wrong with this. And then we live in cities and we have a canal system and all the water in the area of the city is being extracted from nature and all we have is concrete and like stone roofs and then we talk about solar panels but there is a lot of toxic waste in solar panels and what are you going to do yeah. with the solar panels once they're being used up it's toxic waste you know what we also could do? We could just reduce the amount of electricity that we use. We could stop using so much hot water. We could, for instance, simply get used to showering less often. Yeah, that's what I started to do, right? That's just what I started to do. And so I'm transitioning into my kind of life where there's just less. You know, where I walk around here at night with a head torch on my head. And I think it's nice, it's an adventure. And then I read books and I sit in darkness and I just have my hat torch on and I just read the book. I mean, it's nice, right? I think it's nice. So I cannot stand here and simply say that I like what's happening and that I like the idea that children are being handed smartphones and then they suddenly start watching porn because the internet is Pandora's box, my friend. And it took me 16 years, make it 17, from the moment that I started watching porn to the moment where I felt safe to never look at it again for pleasure purposes or anything else because I've watched enough of it now I can just say, I know it's there, but I closed the door. But it's being allowed. This is prostitution, my friend. There are women that are being drugged. And then they're being made slave victims. These women have no free will anymore. I have followed the history of Apollonia, Apollonia La Piedra. I saw her, she looked like a goddess. And in the end she looked up broken. I have seen videos where it was clear that she was being raped. But she could say nothing because she was in a room with two men and she was alone. And she could not help herself. So. It's this promise and the glamour of the porn industry because there's a young girl because I see every woman as a daughter and every man as a son and so I have a little child in myself and this little child feels like it's being destroyed. So if I do spend time with other people and I talk about these things they just laugh. They just laugh. I've said it to people before. I mean, yeah, you're laughing now, but wait 10 years and then you're going to remember, oh, wow, that was this Christopher guy. And he said something about this and suddenly I'm in the middle of it. So my mission today is never leave the house. Yeah. Why? You see, I don't want to live in fear. If I feel like I want to leave the house, I want to leave the house. If I feel like 
I would like to stay inside. I want to be able to stay inside. So, it's in that movie, Captain Fantastic, which is no Marvel production. Where it's being said, you know, it's like <clears throat> something with power and stick it to the man. Okay, let's deal with this. So what I started to see what I can do is I can be true. And that's all I can say. Okay, I can be true, that's what I can do. And I can start to worship nature instead of angry men and I still perceive all these emotions of fear and I feel like you know something may happen to me soon only I just don't know what but yesterday was a clear eye-opener I cannot continue like this I cannot continue living like I feel safe in this system. And then I realize this is 1984 if I want it to be. And I think yesterday I simply made a choice and I said that if you look at the story that Winston created it for himself. He wanted the violence and he was being tortured until he let go of it. Because everyone I meet, in the depth of their heart, they want peace, and they want freedom, and they want non-violence. But because everybody's so afraid that the other one, you know, is out to get them, they just think they have to get them first. And that's the relationship between what we call you know, like the upper class, like the politicians, and then the lower class, which is then the working class. While both of them are depending on each other because, you know, we need each other to live together. It's a community. It's a very large community. And if the people that are making rules and regulations start being afraid of the people that they are ruling you know then they may want them to come out into the open because they think there's surely someone who wants to attack us it's like what do you mean I just want to live my life man and i want you to stop raping nature So in the end, it's the spiritual people that learn how to deal with their fear or anyone who deals with fear. For me, it's about spirituality because it's about spirit and rituality. And because I feel these things deep in my heart, I can then work with these concepts and figure out where I miss these things 
in society. And that's just what I feel is important. Okay, so yesterday it was already, I was afraid to open the window. I was remembering that scene sequence in, yeah, this is good for your ankles. But while I'm filming this, I mean, this is how a true human sits. And it's tough if you've never done it. Just have to get there. <clears throat> okay, so understanding Gandhi's vision. So what you can know about Gandhi is that he's lived... Yeah, he was born and bred in India, and then he became a lawyer, and he went to South Africa. And then in South Africa, he started to realize that there was an imbalance, which was later then known as apartheid, which means like, you know, it's like separation. And what was being separated was People were being separated into color, different colors. So the whites, you know, were given different rights than everyone else. And then you had like creamies and I don't know, you know, it's like people that were brown, such as Indians, were considered less and they were forbidden for example like Indians that wear a turban normally which is a sign of their devotion to their belief or their religion maybe they were being forbidden to keep wearing it indoors and so Gandhi came across this injustice because now he had studied law and he came across this injustice that was happening to his people. And he was, because he always, always was looking for truth. And so he said to himself, this is wrong. I have to do something about it. And so he worked with that. He worked with it and he said, You know, now I'm feeling and experiencing the same thing. I just want to run away from you. Which makes no sense. Which makes no sense. But the fear is there. I feel it. It's inside of me. It's rushing through me. But I see no reason to react to it. What I could do, of course, is to just start moving like this. And this is what I could have done yesterday. But... I also had said in the video that I wanted to go and take pictures and so I did. And so what I experienced as fear was just happening in my mind. And so I'm just starting to learn now how to deal with this and what I also did yesterday I got rid of I had music Nas I deleted him because I felt like I feel like he cannot be trusted I mean if there were children around I would never want them to listen to this it exists but I would like them to listen to I don't know somebody playing the drums maybe So what about Gandhi then? Why did Gandhi start to talk about Satyagraha? Because he realized that there was a lot of violence and he was like his basic rights as a human were being violated 
by distinguishing him as somewhat lesser and different. And he was being like maltreated several times. And then he started to rise against it. He said, no longer do I wish for my people and myself to be treated in such a way. And so he was, because he was a lawyer, he just started to work with law cases and he worked for the people. And he only took the cases that he felt like, that's what I want to work with. He also was looking for liberation. So in that sense, yeah, sure, he did bring a lot of change. In a way, there was his desire. So there's always a bit of selfishness, but it doesn't matter. He saw there was an injustice. injustice. He saw that his people were unhappy. And that made him unhappy, and so he started to oppose this kind of violence, and he simply said, non-violence. You know, this is non-violence. But then he also had to always test himself, because then people would come, and they would test him on his views, and he would simply maintain his position and always teach nonviolence and that's then how they came up with the term satyagraha let me just check it because i have read most of his experiments with proof Most of his experiments with truth. And I just want to see if I can find it in here where he talks about. I like I like this book, but it's sometimes it's a bit painful. Okay, now I wish to turn. No. See, now I start to feel... It's just feelings, my friend. There's no reason... Birth of Satyagraha, page 294. This is second hand. You know, I just got the Viking spirit for seven euros, second hand. <laughs> you know, it's like the small things. It's not like I don't buy anything anymore. The birth of Satyagraha. Okay? It's not just about the book. Nonviolent resistance is just about understanding Gandhi's vision. And this is just to bring it into context with, with what is happening today and why someone like me would talk about these things. Events were so shaping themselves in Johannesburg as to make this self purification on my part a preliminary a preliminary as it were to satyagraha i can now see that all the principal events of my life culminating in the vow of brahmacharya were secretly preparing me for it okay brahmacharya let's see if it's in here of course celibacy and continence he made a choice at one point in his life to never have sex again with his wife because he felt like he had second thoughts about his carnal desires, which are the desires of the flesh. Whereas in my case, I believe it is important 
to get together as man and wife. But, so one has to learn yoga and tantra so that you don't just have children all the time. He felt like it was necessary because if they had sex, they had children. I cannot say at this stage how Mantak Chia does it. You know, in a spiritual sense, when a woman receives a child or not, I believe she would have to be open for it. The question is, can a couple that knows Tantra, you know, connect with each other in a sexual way for their entire lives, but only have two children, for instance? Is it possible to do it in such a way? How conscious is the choice of having a child with someone? Well, that is something I think we all have to find out with each other. <laughs> okay? I can now see that all the principal events of my life culminating in the vow of Brahmacharya were secretly preparing me for it. So he had to have the energy available. The principle called Satyagraha came into being before that name was invented. The principle came into being before it was given the name. Indeed, when it was born, I myself could not say what it was. You see, it's something, it's a feeling that is born within you, but you have no name for it yet. Until you start to study the feeling. This is a bit like Woody Allen, who talks about when he's got an idea that it's like looking into the ocean and then you see like the fin of a fish and then you dwell on the fin and the more you dwell on it, you get the whole fish and that's then the movie. So you have an idea or a feeling and then you work with that feeling and then you find out what the feeling really means. So for me, the feeling yesterday, this amount of fear, in a way I felt like I was running away. But I mean, hey, I went for a hike. It also feels like I was running towards. Because I came back, right? Because this is the center of myself. This is where I make love to life. I spend a lot of time alone here and I think it's good. I don't know. Yeah. I did turn off my phone though. The principle called Satyagraha came into being before the name was invented. Indeed, when it was born, I myself could not say what it was. In Gujarati also, we use the English phrase passive resistance to describe it. Now, I'm just going to interject here because a passive resistance would require no action, but Gandhi was a very active man. He was a man of action. He was, therefore, a Kshatriya. He was a kind of a leader, a doer, and that's then Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita. And he did what he had to do, and there were two opposing forces. And he made his choices and fought, but without violence. Only what is violence then? You know, violence comes also from to violate. And now I'm just teaching you how to work with books, my friend. Because this is what you got to do yourself. So I've got a dictionary on here. And so sometimes I'm working with the etymology just to see the word root, where it originated from. And I have often come to very interesting... Yeah. Traces of truth in words such as animosity, which we say means to be hostile, 
while the original word comes from the word animus and that means spirit and I'm sure anyone who's played Assassin's Creed knows about this, the animus just means spirit or mind. So it's not hostility but that we say that animosity means hostility shows you in what kind of a world we're living in. In a world that's like, you know, deliberately, you know, wanting to hate or something. We just have to find our own way to deal with this. So I don't care if you drink a coffee, if you shout at your child or throw your keys at your dog, then you've lost it, man. And then nature will come and show you. Okay, let's just check violin violence, yeah? Okay, behavior involving physical force intended to hurt, damage or kill someone or something. Now it comes law. The unlawful exercise of physical force or intimidation by the exhibition of such force. Second, strength of emotion or of a destructive natural force, the violence of our own feelings. So violence can be emotional. Mothers can exert emotional violence on their children by projecting all their fear onto them and requiring them to do so because you can direct people with your mind that's what you gotta understand your will now we come to the origin middle english via old french from latin violencia from violent vehement or violent okay now we have to go to violent the eject i'm just gonna sh skip to the word Using or involving physical force, it's the same, especially of an emotion, okay. Okay, violently, Middle English in the sense having a marked or powerful effect. Do you, do you see this? Do you see this? We use the word violence and we say, you know, it's like physical force upon, upon someone. And then you look at the, the origin and it says, in the sense, having a marked or powerful effect. Via Old French from Latin, violent, vehement, violent. So what violent really means is just having a strong effect. So you could say that Black Friday is violent because it has a strong effect on the purchase behavior or on the behavior in general of human beings okay yeah this is how i work with these things i make sure that i understand i know people that just scan through books they just you know i really work with them or i have started to do so i have always done so I do want the words, but I also want to understand what they originally meant so that I can disassociate myself, which is the dissociative state is what meditation is about. You sit here and you try to cleanse yourself from all the ideas you have about yourself. And for that, you have to know how to dissociate yourself from yourself which is all the expectations that people hold on you. And these expectations may be violent if you act accordingly because they have a strong effect. So if people's expectations have an effect on your behavior, then you can say that they are violent. So if I'm being expected to have stuff or to be injected things into my body, then that's an expression of violence. And then on the other hand, some people may submit to it and some people may say, I don't want it. I'm not a naysayer, I'm a yes-sayer. I say yes to nature. I say yes to myself. But for that I had to work hard to realize what is myself. 
And that's what this is about. It's like Gandhi going to South Africa, realizing, wait a second, there are people that are, or that came from the same place as I come from, and they're being treated like people of a lower class. And that's what's been happening in the last two to three years. I, as someone who says spirituality, nature, retreating also within, and then finding healing, working with your inner child, my opinion was discriminated against. I myself, as a human being, was discriminated against. I could no longer go into a shop. Sorry, there's just a bit of an itch. I could no longer go into the shop without following their rules and wearing the mask. I'm just saying. But for me, it was a fallacy. It was useless. Because if they would have all gone into nature and, you know, done their breath work and done their cleansing, we would ha never have to ha do these things. And so it ha had a strong, so what I perceived was violence because it had a strong effect on me. And so in my opinion, there is no non-violence because anything has a strong effect. So nature is violent because it's like a storm, it's violence. It has a strong effect on its environment. Now I have a strong effect on my environment. And people have asked me, why do you always have to be so different? And I said, it's just the way I am. <laughs> okay, so I, there is no passive resistance. When in a meeting of Europeans, I found that the term passive resistance was too narrowly construed, that it was supposed to be a weapon of the weak, that it could be characterized by hatred and that it could finally manifest itself as violence. I had to demur to all these statements and explain the real nature of the Indian movement. Okay, so he was clearly trying to revolutionize the relationships between human beings so that different nations and different you know, so like people with different skin colorations could see themselves in each other and live together in harmony. And because he was living in a state now that was treating, I mean, where people were treating each other with hatred and contempt and some were being treated like slaves and others like kings. He had to find ways to express the emotions he felt in a way that people could understand them. So as a lawyer, he had been given the intellectual capacity to understand, you know, right and wrong. But in the end, it's a feeling. He could have also just done nothing. But he was never passive, he was always active. He wanted to do things, and so he did them. But he also found ways to communicate them in a way that adhered or abstained from physical violence. So I would say what we're talking about here is, you know, violence is just something that has a strong effect. What we mean then when we talk about a nonviolent resistant is a resistance that refrains from physical violence against other human beings and maybe even all living beings, which is then the idea of vegetarianism. Where I have a problem with, because if I look at the milk, for example, or the cheese that I buy, I know how the cows are being treated and so I know that, to me, it looks like violence. Because these cows are no longer free. But I also feel that, to a certain degree, I need milk and cheese because it satisfies me on a different level. And that's just hard 
for me to understand still. So to me, I'm rather a vegetarian than a vegan. But I can live vegan to a large degree, but I also do feel more satisfied when I eat cheese. And that's just what you have to decide for yourself. Okay, it was clear that a new word must be coined by the Indians to designate their struggle, but I could not for the life of me find out a new name, and therefore offered a nominal prize through Indian opinion, it's like a leaflet or something, to the reader who made the best suggestion on the subject. As a result, Maganla Gandhi coined the word Sadagraha, Sat meaning truth and Agraha meaning firmness. So it's like, that's the truth, that's what we all see, that's what we all feel, but it's a firm truth because we've looked at it. And that's what Gandhi did. He looked at the state of affairs and then he said, we need a word for this. You know, I need a word to express what I'm seeing and what I'm feeling. And so he was looking for it, he got a suggestion, Sadagraha. And so that guy, Maganlal Gandhi, is not Mahatma Gandhi, Maganlal Gandhi, you know, it's like someone who reacted and won the prize. But in order to make it clearer, I changed the word to Satyagraha, which has since become current in Gujarati as a designation for the struggle. Because, of course, it was Gandhi's idea and his emotion that led to the newspaper announcement that there would be a prize for someone who could offer a suggestion that could express what Gandhi was feeling. And when I read it the first time, I actually got angry and I thought, well, <laughs> now he stole it. Why did he have to change it? Well, because it was his feeling. And you cannot give credit too much to Maganla Gandhi because he was not the one who wanted to do this, okay? Let's just finish this. Okay, as a designation for the struggle. The history of this struggle is for all practical purposes a history of the remainder of my life in South Africa and especially of my experiments with truth in that subcontinent. I wrote the major portion of this history in Gerabda jail and finished it after I was released. It was published in Navajivan and subsequently issued in book form Blah, blah, blah. has been translating it into English, the current thought, but I now am arranging to have the English translation published in book form at an early date so that those who will may be able to familiarize themselves with my most important experiments in South Africa. I would recommend a perusal of my history of Satyagraha in South Africa to such readers as have not seen it already. I will not repeat what I have put down there, but in the next few chapters will deal only with a few personal incidents of my life in South Africa which have not been covered by that history. And when I have done with these, I will at once proceed to give the reader some idea of my experiments in India. Therefore, anyone who wishes to consider these experiments in their strict chronological order will now do well to keep the history of such a grand South Africa before him. Okay? I think that's all I had to say. But... You see... And here it says Satyagraha, which can be loosely translated as insistence on truth. It's like a firm kind of a truth. Because if you then look at what was happening in South Africa when he came there and his people were being treated like some kind of lower being, 
he simply had to say, but we're not. You and I are the same. You know, you walk around in a suit of flesh and I walk around in a suit of flesh. And what gives you the right to act like I'm a lower being? You cannot do this to me. And that's then the truth. Because if I allow you to discriminate against me and I do like, you know, I act like you're some kind of God. But what's nature then? You know, I pray to nature. So nature is my church. And so I do feel like always I want to be outside. And also right now I feel like I'm being shaken. Sitting like this. When you have built up the strength. And your inner resistance is becoming less. You may sit here and experience like real deep moments of peace, even when drinking a coffee. And this is something that I have been working with because I often felt anxiety also when drinking coffee. And I just want to learn to deal with this in a much more calm manner. So that no matter what I do, I can always be like this. And that's then also a form of resistance. So I am resisting being washed away by my emotions, such as I have been yesterday. Because yesterday I clearly left the house because I gave in to the fear. So I never want to leave the house because I'm afraid to be abducted and killed and shot. But right now I feel like, you know, somebody may storm into here. The question is, why should they do this? I think this city has nothing against me. I think people like me here. But I often feel like they don't like me. But I'm a good guy. I do good work, I do a good job, I stand up for people, I say, hey, let's promote health, let's be healthy, you know, let's be hopeful, because the industry is slowly moving away from here, so we need something else, we need someone who can say, hey, let's do this together, so I don't know where you live and what the situation is where you live, but this is where I live. And so, the revolution starts in yourself. And what you do have to do is resist this kind of your want to destroy things or to punch into walls or to punch yourself. And then to look at what spoken really does to you. And then to make a choice for yourself also and say, hey, I think I'm gonna stop because smoking is bad for energy flow and if your energy is not flowing then it wants to seep out and then you just spend money on all kinds of things so what we have to understand is not so much what Gandhi did but what we have to do now because every generation also needs to induce change because now we are the young people we are the ones that want healing and peace and what we have to see is that there may be people even in governments that want the same thing they just don't know how and so the product that you need to see is yourself which is if you start to manifest change in your own life without having to share it online you can just walk around and be the change. But then, you know, never force it on anyone. Because that's the violence. And you still have a strong effect. If I walk through a city, I have a strong effect because I'm different. There's like stuff being channeled. There's like energy flowing. And that's just when you become a pillar. And so you give stability to your surroundings. 
And what I was thinking yesterday, because this is about spirituality, and then we talk about terms like magic, and you think, you know, well, what's this chopper looking for me? Because I was channeling all this energy and they picked it up and they thought, hey, this guy is evil. You know, we have to take him out. He wants to topple us over. But I never topple anyone over. I just say, you know, back to the self, back to meditation, back to emotional stability so that I could sit here and children could run around and I can write a book. <laughs> you know, that's my vision, that's my dream, that I can do what I'm doing and never be... Like, just stay in the center of yourself. But the center I can carry around, of course. I can carry it into nature and I can leave it here. But sometimes I also feel like that this place needs me to be here so that I can fill this room with life because that's also what it's about it's not just about always running around so freedom also means sometimes you got to learn how to be free in the presence of yourself and there is this imbalance and so I am working on my left side, which is important, still. So what I wanted to say, I have been in contact with the police and I never saw a problem because they're humans. They don't want trouble. Okay, let's just check. So I am clearly getting in some way, some kind of attention. Okay, now I want to look at man's part, 192. Because I'm also clearly talking to the men, and the women have to talk for the women, but I can also say what works. The following is a free rendering of extracts from my speech delivered before men just after the women's conference at Dandi on 13th instant. I have just finished the women's conference. You will like to know what part we men may take in the women's movement. In the first place, we men may not meddle with the women's pickering of liquor and foreign cloth shops. If we do, we are likely to make a hash of it as we did in 1921. We can assist them in a variety of ways. The two classes of picketing have been designed to provide them with a special and exclusive field of activity. We can help by making the acquaintance of liquor and toddy dealers and interviewing them personally and asking them to give up the traffic now that the nation is going through the throes of a new birth. One can help also by showing greater and more delicate respect towards our women. Such general leveling up of the atmosphere will act upon the liquor dealer and also the foreign cloth dealer and buyer and drinker as neither will then be able to resist the appeal made to the heart by the gentle sex. There is no gentle sex, my friend. Women are not gentle or not more gentle than men. I have been tried. I mean, I have tried to be gentle with women but I have received a lot of violence from them. So women have a strong effect on men and men have a strong effect on women. And it's the other way around. You know, you always have a strong effect on someone. And it, even if you are like the victim in your own life, you have a strong effect on other people because if people always come and club you and try to suppress you, then you simply have a strong effect on other people. And then the question is why? Because maybe you even want that. Because you're lacking strength and you're looking for strength on the outside. And if you look for strength on the outside, then somebody may come and wants to give it to you. But if that man is unbalanced, then he will like try to push it into you with force. And that's then what rape is. 
And so you are always responsible for what is happening to you. So I do feel like I'm being given an opportunity here. But at the same time, there are things that I cannot really control. Some things I simply let happen. Because I can always be like strong. But I can also say, hey, you know, I still got family. If I'm always here, like super strong and I sit here, then I stop living. And I don't want to be like Maharaji always sitting or lying on the blankets. You know, I want to be like, you know, self-responsible in certain ways, which is why I stopped smoking. Ahimsa is preeminently such a virtue. Women exercises, woman exercises it naturally and intuitively when man reaches it through a laborious analytical process. Women left to themselves are likely quicker to reach the goal than if we men were to meddle with their picketing. You see, you cannot get all the truth that you want, even not from a Gandhi, and certainly also not from me. All I can do is look at myself, see how I feel, because what he's saying is clearly whitewashing the truth. That's not the truth. He's taking the entirety of women, womanhood, he just puts them together and says, yeah, they're all gentle. They're gentle men, and they're gentle women. And then they're like aggressive men, and then they're aggressive women. You know, it's in the middle. We're all light and we all shadow. You cannot just say that a woman is purely light because she's also got a shadow. And you cannot say that a man is purely evil. You know, it's always both sides. But his devotion to his wife was clearly different. I mean, he just said, I do not want to use you, but maybe she wanted to be used. Maybe she wanted to be his wife and sleep with him and cuddle together. But he was simply demonizing this way of connecting with each other and sharing the love and being close to each other. He was clearly demonizing it. And he was rejecting his wife even, kept her away from himself for large periods of time because he never really trusted himself with her. And that for me is something that I just don't want. When I read this, I clearly reject what he's saying here because I have seen a lot of situations where women were very on the verge of also physical violence, trying to control me with their will, but just being unable to do so because I've done my hardening. Like I've hardened myself in nature and I've hardened myself in many ways. And now I sit here, I feel good. It may well be that if I would go now and work on my laptop that I would feel this surge of fear again. And I also know that this kind of a life cannot be maintained forever. So I am clearly looking for a woman. I'm clearly looking for change for a specific woman. A feeling I have of a woman. I'm looking for change in my life, in myself. All I can do is keep changing and then see when this change will manifest itself. And that's then what we consider as the law of attraction. So what I want to and what I'm attracting into my life is peace and stability. And what I do always, you know, I clean it. If I feel fear and anger, I do something to deal with it. So yesterday I went for that walk that I wanted to do anyway. And despite the fear of being discovered, I still went for the walk. And I feel like that's the only thing I can do because I know I haven't done anything. I don't sit here and dwell on, ah, how can I destroy the state or something? No. I just think about a better life for children. I dream about that and everything I do is towards that goal. 
a better life for children. Happy children, really happy children, not children being stuffed with sugar, but just happy children that feel free and safe. And that's what I stand for. But I still feel fear, my friend, because there's people that may hate what I represent because they think I have something that they want, but they cannot just take it from someone. You gotta work for that. You gotta do your meditation practice. You know, it's like a man that has anal sex with another man probably wants something in that other man, but he can never get to it that way. Because there's nothing in your anus. It's not what it's for, my friend. So if you want life, then you gotta live. And so I had this experience yesterday where I went for a walk and then I realized, okay, maybe it was a bit overkill. Now that's just how I dealt with the fear then. So now I'm feeling the same kind of fear, I may deal with it differently. And that's then the only thing I can do. To also learn to never be portrayed as a madman. To simply say, hey, I've got emotions, man. I've got feelings. And that's how I'm playing it. I've got feelings too. You cannot treat me like a human like a human of second class, because I live in the same world here. I have access to the internet. I am allowed to speak here. I am allowed to say something. I am allowed to say that I would like a revolution, but peaceful. And that's my message. And if that scares you and you want to kill me for it, well, then you clearly have work to do, my friend, because I'm not a threat. Is if I'm threatening what you think you want to build, then you don't give a shit about how I feel or how the people felt when you pushed your weird regulations onto them, your one-sided opinion. And that can never be truth. The truth is in the middle, which is why I see there's people who are struggling, but I see the system is struggling for money well, then the system should just do a good job. And then people would probably say, hey, you know, I gladly invest into this system because, you know, it keeps me happy. It tells me what to do. It shows me how to lead a better life. And that also means that we cannot have politicians that drive around in expensive cars and eat like caviar. No then a politician should eat cabbage soup that his wife made instead of going to a three-star restaurant and take the money that he was being given responsibility of from the people to just fatten himself. And that's just my opinion. So to have others work for you and then just reap the benefits and keep it all to yourself I mean, that's just Gollum, my friend. You know, Gollum could have shared the ring. It was power. It was a ring. But it stood for something. The greed for power. He just wanted it to himself. And that's what we all have to work with. The inner Gollum. Right? Because in the end, it was gold. It was a golden ring. You know, it could have been a silver... Whatever. But it was a golden ring in the story. And so we... You know, Gollum could have said, hey, I like, finally, I've got some friends, you know, Frodo really likes me. But he didn't do that, he said, he's got the ring, you know, I want him. So it's like if you're being given money, or you have money, then you have to take responsibility for it. And instead of just wasting it on yourself always, you got to see, okay, what can I invest it in that can help me and the people? Which is why, yeah, I still go to the boulder hall. Although I do see there's like plastic in the boulder hall and, you know, all that stuff. But that's the world that I'm living in. I cannot just leave it all behind because there's still people here. That's how I feel like. 
but it's a real stretch to me to go to the boulder hall because I think, well, I could also just go into the forest, but there's no one. I like being around people and I can only show to the people what I've learned if I'm where the people are. You know, it's like they see a real life human being. And for that, I've been working with my shadow. And so if I read this, it's not about sucking up to what Gandhi said, because, I mean, look at that guy. He's got an evil grin. He just wanted to be enlightened and he got shot for it because he was phony. He just wanted to be enlightened. He was just selfish. He never did it for anyone but himself. And if you read his stories, that's the truth. He wanted to be some kind of enlightened guy and he got shot for it because he dragged people into it because he wanted enlightenment. He wanted to reach these kind of goals and he clearly says it everywhere. He was so selfish that he never even cuddled with his wife anymore. That's how selfish this man was that we all started to worship. Oh yeah, Gandhi, Gandhi. Yeah, clearly he did good work. Let's not mistake this. But he's not the saint that we try to mark him as, and neither am I. I'm not a saint. And that's the most truthful that I can give you, because if I have violent thoughts in my mind, like all kinds of violent thoughts, whatever, then I have to take responsibility for them. But I know they're still there because I'm a being of light or light and shadow, wherever which part is. If there's too much shadow, then I have to work with my light. And if there's too much light, I have to work with my shadow because in the middle, I never want to harm anyone. But if somebody wants to harm me, you know, then I just go away. Because you'll find someone that wants to be harmed. I cannot stop people from harming other people. I can just say, I will no longer participate in this. But I also don't just want to sit around and do nothing. You know, I want to live a life. I want to go to places. I want to be also where stuff is happening. And this is why on a Sunday, I go to the Boulder Hall. And then I prepare myself. But there is the constructive activity of the women, manufacture of Kadi. This is an activity which requires the assistance of every man, woman and child. So instead of seeing each other as like men and women, we have to see each other as the people. There's men, there's women, and together there's children. So we need men, we need men and we need women, but each man or each man and each woman has light or light and shadow, right? And what each man and each woman has to learn is yoga. And yoga starts by seeing your shadow and then loving it. And then you're gonna hate loving your shadow and that's great. I mean, I love hating things and I hate loving them. <laughs> you see what I mean? This is what I do with yoga. So there's no threat from me to anyone because what I want is people to be free. And, you know, if I live in a system that hates free people, then they have to start loving it because we do this anyway. And I mean, how could this be bad? I'm just thinking about this, the chef, the wok, the sushi chef, you know, there's like a movie about a cook and this cook is like, tch, 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 he's like super strong. Yeah, sure, if you had a like real wok, they're heavy, they're really heavy, man. And so this, I'm a good chef, I'm a great chef. And so what we do here is to never read anything and see it as the absolute truth. We have to look at what this means in relation to what I'm seeing and feeling now, what I'm perceiving, because times have changed. Now we're dealing with the internet. Now we're dealing with lots of cars. 
Now we're dealing with manipulation through platforms like TikTok or even YouTube. We have to be open to these things where certain, certain information is allowed while other information is not allowed. And so I, all I can do is talk about these things without saying, you know, let's destroy anything. I'm not questioning everything, but I do question the things that I find worth questioning. And so for me, it's always going into the movement and working with the people that want to move because I was being denied movement from an early age, always told to sit and I got sick of it and I wanted to change that and I just wanted to re-engage with my inner child and so I simply started saying no to sugar and started saying yes to myself and that's a real stretch if you look at how they would hold a coffee ceremony in Ethiopia, for instance, this is like a social gathering, deep connection, meditation, peace, sharing a moment. Whereas here we just go and have like, you know, coffee just like that. So to me, if I drink a coffee, I have to use it for something. And if it helps me in my meditation, then good. And if I experience a lot of fear and anger, well, then that's what I have inside of me. And I have started doing art with coffee. I started drinking strong four-shot espresso, and I did add sugar at the time, and also cinnamon and nutmeg and coriander and garam masala but without garlic and then I simply started to make art and now I started to do this because I'm working on my inner balance so I need to see that my left side is as strong as my right otherwise I will always be drawn into fear because of the imbalance in myself and then I become a symptom of fear rather than a symbol of strength. <laughs> Sometimes I say these things and they're just so true because I've looked at it. <sighs> and this is tough on me because nobody wanted to join me. It may start to change, but for now, so even now I feel like I wanted to pee but I can work with this for a certain amount of time. But sometimes it's just better to pee. And so, working under pressure. <laughs> I think that's it, working under pressure. Or the pressure of one working under pressure. Cheers. I thought I was an angel, the devil climbed my back. Who I'm supposed to be in this, I really cannot say. The truth is that I'm lonely, the truth is I want love. You gotta find your center and figure yourself out. Okay, sometimes I want to record myself simply to get attention. And that I believe is always like you have to retest really yourself. If you were ever in a position like me, this is session number three, by the way, I had this word in my head, Brahmacharya, which I have touched on in the previous 
session and it is about you could say non-cooperation with your wife because you say I will no longer have sex with you um, I think what for me Brahmacharya would be is that if you have a spiritual partner one you feel this deep connection with that nobody understands and everybody tries to get rid of then you must be true to it and so to me brahmacharya is something that can also be just a phase in one's life the question is whether gandhi's choice because i really have some things where I struggle to follow Gandhi through the course of his life or what he's speaking about simply because of the deductions that he makes and then says that they're true. So from his perspective that all seemed very real and I'm sure he's aware that like from my or your perspective, it may seem surreal, but what you can never forget is that he was in the middle of his own life while you get to look at it from the outside. So he was in the inside looking out and stuff was happening to him. And now you stand there on the outside, try to look in and what you find is that you can never find him except if you look at his deeds. Now his devotion to truth, which he then also calls God, is ultimately the true, the devotion to what he feels is right. And that's basically how I lead my life. I must look at what's happening to me both on the outside and on the inside and then I must clean this because it's important to stay clean. So, to me, what sexuality can be is also a form of cleansing but only if it's true. Like, if both of you are working towards some kind of higher goal, which is moving on or just death, which is then the word for moving on, yeah? So what life is about, it's supposed to prepare you to let go. Which is what I do with my art. I make art to let go. And then I can look at it. I've even made predictions in my own life, which I cannot fully understand yet. Because it's just too complex to understand it. And because it is too complex, I find solace in recording myself trying to explain to the world what is happening to me as a spiritual seeker so that I can be the voice for people who are like me who said, well, there are forms that are being advertised as healing, which I find very toxic. And because there are more people like me, such as possibly you, I believe that it is important that we band together and understand what is happening here, because I'm sure it's happening to more people than the ones that say it is happening to them. 
And that's just what I feel is true. So, sure, I use electricity. I do drink coffee. I could do breath work. I'm very well aware of my own flaws. And I believe so was Gandhi to a certain degree. But what we must never underestimate is the felt experience. And I believe that even politicians felt that something was a bit wrong with what, have, what has happened. So it seems like at the moment they stopped pushing. So now we must face the truth that we need alternative ways of dealing with being a human. And these are supposed to be non-violent ways. Which is why yesterday I then at around 12 just went to bed because reading no longer satisfied me and I was just like sinking into myself and I felt the need to simply go to bed and let go. Now I woke up this morning, I felt... So I changed my clothes washed myself a bit under my arms put in a fresh batch of laundry this is lemon i like it i mean it's a stretch from drinking calm coffee the normal way and then to drink it like this but i like to experiment and so what his life was about was also in a way experiments with truth what kind of a world do I live in here? You know, how far can I go? What's the limits of this experience? Because if you are in the observer, you realize that you can also leave your body to a certain degree and observe yourself in the felt experience. Then you also make sure that you never become your emotions that you stay in the observer. So, okay. The reason Gandhi decided then to stop having sex was because he realized that his wife would probably just pop out more children because that's probably what she wanted. I don't know. And he just said, I think three is enough. <laughs> Because maybe he also just wanted his wife to stay around. So I just don't really know, right? I mean, the idea of having sex until you're 180 is in a way preposterous. But at the same time, you know, I have seen it. It's better for a man to learn how to let go of wanting to have sex all the time because if you cling, then your wife may hate spending time with you. And I have met many women that express this in one way or another, that in the next life they just want to be a hus have a husband that's impotent. Because a lot of men just use their women to make themselves feel better. So there's no real dialogue anymore. And I'm sure that's what Gandhi did. And that's why he felt ashamed. So the way I see it is I, as a man, want to have something to give, but I also want a woman that can take it if she wants to. And that's my perspective, you know? So I give art because that's what I can give. If my wife would be here and she would want to have like private time with me, then we could surely do that. But then there's going to be rules. 
there's going to be rules and these rules will demand certain times of celibacy where you simply refrain from having sex and then you build up the energy and then you have sex again and then sex becomes basically your your method of letting go it becomes your psychedelic it becomes how you shoot yourself into the sky with your partner it becomes transcendental and transformational so you build up emotions and when you feel like Man, now we've got the energy it's like wow so if you have sex once and then you have it again and again and again it just makes no sense you just have to always build it up build it up build it up and that's what i believe and that's what i think at the moment but if a woman would be here i'm sure it would be very hard but i then just have to test my feelings because also if the woman is unable to seduce me and to draw me in i mean i as a man also want to be deceived into thinking that she has something that I need, right? Like, I also want to be played with. I also want to be like, you know, I don't always want to be the guy who comes to you and says, hey, you want to have sex? You know, I also want that the woman comes and just sends me clear signs instead of always waiting for me to come and take her because if she wants it, she has to take it. And I think Gandhi's wife could have done this. But apparently she wasn't really... I'm sure that the reason why he stopped wanting to have sex with her was because she was just doing the beetle. So he felt like he was using her because she was never really engaging with him. And I think you can be sure about that. Because Gandhi never talked about doing yoga. He said he was going for walks. So he clearly never practiced Tantra. But then he also probably have had no wife that was interested in Tantra. And so I get it. She probably wanted him. But she was afraid to say something. And what I want is a huntress. I want a warrior wife. One that demands that we get together. And that's why I will never understand why Ragnar Lothbrok in the Viking series, which is a complete distortion from the truth, because they, why would they need all these gimmicks? They just have long hair. Um, it's just what I think. <laughs> Well, at the same time, of course, we as humans always uh, try to find ways to outshine each other. Hey, wait, that's different. So yeah, I'm also getting sick of talking, by the way. So that's why, for me, a coffee is surely going to help me, I hope. May hope so too. Because if you can't help yourself, then who will? Um, so you do see that. Satyagraha can be. Uh, this is Italian roast. Yeah. This is Pike's place. So these I got from my neighbors. Which got them from the shop because they were thrown away, and that's also part of the movement. You know, non violence, so you don't just throw stuff away, you make sure you use it. But I have thrown a lot of stuff away because I simply had too much, and so. You know, what, the way Ramda said is a big clearance, you know, everything must leave. So please do your homework. If you don't understand me, I cannot go back 
and try to be like Ram Dass, you have to do this yourself. I already listened to his stuff for hours on end, so you would have to do the same thing if you wanted to know where I'm coming from. You will never know the whole truth about me, never ever, as much as you dive into my content, as much time as you spend with me or what I have to say, you will be always restricted to seeing it from the perspective of your own self, which means that what I truly am cannot be filmed, which is why I can portray myself here. I mean, of course, if I would be alone, which is then the most truthful I could ever be to you, then I would just probably say nothing because I don't sit around and I talk like this all day. And so what we try to do is speak from a place of truth. And that's then what the movement is about, the nonviolent resistance. It's about first finding truth in yourself and learning to understand the perspective of maybe a person like me. Um, yeah, I have listened a lot to Terence McKenna, but I ultimately realized or was guided to see that he was stuck on using psychedelics and I realized I'm the psychedelic. I can stop taking mushrooms all the time because at some point you're just awake, my friend. And when you're awake, you need way less. So I also do things to stay awake. And that is making art. That's it for me. You know, the, the sweeper in Momo, Momo, Sweet by Michael Ende, he was a sweeper. And so he sweeped himself to heaven. Look at this. Like, look at this, seriously. It's just trash. It's just gonna go in the trash. How is that not violent? We produce things just to throw them away. That's violence. Because it has a strong effect, what we learn now, it has a strong effect. And in this case, it has a strong effect on the environment. So, yes, nonviolence doesn't exist. I mean, if something is non-violent, then it has no effect at all, which means it's basically then non-existence. So the non-violent resistance is then something else, because we want to have an effect, and so we show who we truly are, and then we live the life that we feel is the most harmonious to find ourselves in so that we can move on into a brighter future, so to speak. Yeah, I'm also preparing. This is soaking. Don't know how it's called in English. German it's called. Oh yeah. Kaufen. Yes. So we all must learn in our own ways how to communicate. And this is how I communicate. However much you like me, I cannot say. It's also partly irrelevant. Because I too have insecurities. I too often wonder if it is good what I'm doing here and if this is what people need. I do get these kinds of ideas 
but then I'm also the one. Who's... Well, let's say I like you. But it's also a stretch from... You know, the version of myself that drinks no coffee. This is no water. Yeah, I really... I mean, if you really f fall in love once... And this is a spiritual connection we're talking about. Oh, yeah, I got a clean probably. Not just probably, you already got a clean, my friend. Because the looking nice here and then leaving the house and looking nice there is also clearly different from... Oh, damn it. stain is a symbol for maybe we can interpret it nope wow I feel really cold okay I've also got the windows open it's very chilly outside okay Now I just want to use electricity for some reason, because it's dark. It looks dark outside. And to me, it gets a bit boring to always film myself in the same kind of position. So yesterday I have read more in Experiments with Truth. Oh, yeah, I know. I could also just do this to get warm. <sighs> so I'm gonna just have to settle right into form, into place, into space. Today I woke up, I was very uncertain. Like, yesterday I felt or during this night, I felt so happy about the idea of really, you know, getting up and then making a coffee. But then the actual reality of doing these things turned out to be quite hard. So yesterday I also fixed this. This looks very sloppy. Just couldn't do a better job because it was so emotional because this stands in connection to who I believe to be my wife or the woman I fell in love with and I was wearing it and then suddenly it started to piss me off and then I had these emotions that I should just throw it away or whatever and then I started to fix some of the holes but I realize, I don't think this is really... I mean, I can do these things, I have done these things, but at the moment I just feel like... I don't know, there's something blocking me. And I don't know what. So... What I find really hard, if we talk about non... or Satyagraha, let's just stick with the term, I've explained to you now what I believe violence means. But first, this is an opener, okay? It opens something in you. It activates some chakra or something. So to me, I'm constantly being haunted or tortured by emotions of betrayal. Like, feelings... Yeah, I have to change this. It's not how I would like to be now. Yeah, okay. Sometimes it's just important to allow change to happen and also new kinds of perspectives. Because I've already done this. 
too many times. And now you can ask yourself, well, that means, well, what does it mean to you? Well, maybe you believe I'm some kind of, maybe I've been here already. But when I came, everything was new. And so I may have been here already. And sometimes I see people in the boulder hall. And I see them remembering, like they remember this feeling of climbing. And then I ask myself, why? So, however high you want to get, it's better to try to never put yourself on some kind of pedestal and also not on a shelf. You know, you want to be in life. You want to live life. And... I'm just waiting till I'm getting back to myself. Because I have to do both things at the same time. I have to be the woman and the man at the same time. I have to do my own laundry. I have to clean this apartment. I have to tend to the flowers. I have to do both things at the same time. There's no woman in here. There's nobody to share my bed. And the question is whether it will always be like this. Well, if it is, then it must be okay. The thing is, I think that's what Gandhi tried to become, but he failed to see that he had a wife and he just put her down on the bench and said, I don't have time for you anymore. And so there were things yesterday that I read that just made me shake my head. Yeah, I really started laughing. And I rarely ever laugh, but when I read about this guy, I had to laugh because just look at this shit. I mean, seriously, I can't take this serious anymore. I mean, you really have to know who you think is your enlightened guy. I have some really weird perspectives, my friend. The woes of third-class passengers. Of course, he learned a lot about being... So here it says he was like really desperate to travel third-class. He wanted to be the lowest of the low because he wanted to be enlightened. And that's the truth. He just wanted to find enlightenment. And for that, he was willing to be like, oh, you know, I'm the lowest of the low. But he thought he was the highest of the high. And that's the truth. If you get into him and read about what he said. So, sure, I'm also about letting go. But I don't so much try to be something I'm not. So I don't have to travel third class. You know, if there's a second. So, there are some things which, because I was also born into middle class. And he was also born into more like a middle class. But he was trying to reject that, which is why he was phony. Stick in your own group of people. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that. But I already do. Because what I do is this. I could be on the streets working with people like he did, but I'm doing this, at least at the moment. I'm educating people who can understand me and who want to listen to what I have to say. Because believe it or not, I am a learned man and I have made experiences that some may never make. And so others make the same. So anyway, he was like trying to get into a third class compartment in a train. And so he bought the tickets, but then there was no space and he had to go into second class. And then he felt like, oh, what an injustice. I want to be third class. It's like really how he describes it. He was just rushing around trying to be 
like appear like he had nothing well, he had so much. And then on the other hand, he wants to travel third class. But then he allows people to pamper him with bringing all kinds of nuts to him and seeds. It's like, oh, I want to enlighten. Fucking idiot. Sorry. I'm really sorry. I have really controversial thoughts about Gandhi. I really don't like that guy. And that's the real me. You know, if I read about Vikings, no, there's something real to me. Because that's where I'm coming from. I'm not coming from this guy. You know, he's just someone that we portray as, oh, Mahatma Gandhi, look at what he did. Yeah, but it doesn't work here. Because I'm a German. Yeah. Because I'm a German and I'm different. So do I still want to eat vegetarian? You know, I'm always going through these phases, like meat, no meat, am I vegan now, am I vegetarian? You know, clinging to anything pisses me off. But he was clearly clinging. He was clinging to, I want to be in a third class. <laughs> and then he was put in a second class, and then he was like running around trying to get into third class. I want to be in the third class. And then he was in the third class, and then he was trying to get a refund because he had to pay extra when there was no space in the third class and he moved into second class. Well, I want to be in the third class. The fucking idiot. I mean, he lost his teeth. How much can you learn from a guy like that? And then people say, oh, you're truly the father of the nation. What do you mean? So he was trying to run away from this. He was just making belief. So I'm really always have to go through accepting the teachings of another man. So it's not so much about that I hate him or that I completely reject him. It's more about, hmm, I think I'm off-center. Then the question is, why am I off-center? Well, yesterday I was being, I get like these images and being just tortured. The woman I fell in love with, like, I get these images in my mind. She's sleeping with another man. You know, she's having sex with another man. She's getting massages from other men. And it may well be true. It may well be true and it hurts like hell. And I think why she does that is because you know, I keep on going or giving myself to the boulder hall here. Because I'm sorry, but she's just out and about running around doing her own thing. Oh, well, that's how it seems. And I'm just in here recording myself in seclusion. Feeling the need that I also have to share what I'm doing. Because I'm trying to create an income here. For myself. So that there's money available. So I'm trying to set the scene for something. But I don't know who to trust anymore. Because everybody's just lying about everything. Nobody tells me anything. I have met with people and I am a good guy. You know, I have a clear direction. And then I go to other people and they talk about, they want to have like, they have like this giant mansion with like, a lot of space and then they want to grow mushrooms to earn money in this system my friend what do you want to land in prison is this a safe place for children guys who smuggle weed right and then you've got like people in your neighborhood and one tells you yeah I smuggle cocaine with my bike with my motorcycle then you're like you look at his cars and you see he's got like a huge BMW and the second car. But he's just a normal worker in a firm. And then you ask yourself, does that make sense? And then you actually realize, I think he was telling the truth. But then he says that he's lying. 
but then I just don't understand it anymore. How do people communicate? Why is everybody lying about everything? I mean, am I lying too? I mean, I'm saying this and then I'm saying that. So, I'm also left and right. Because I cannot say exactly what I'm going to do until the situation emerges. So today I woke up and I had a feeling. Okay, something I had, something needed to be cleaned. I realized I don't want to shower. So I will shower on Sunday in the bowler hall. And then I realized, okay, now I'm starting to calm down. But I just don't know why. You see what I mean with this? Nonviolent resistance. There was just something like happening in myself, to myself or to someone else. Like something was building up and truth hurts my friend. The place you were building can never be child friendly. Because the man you invite all smoke tobacco and weed and are depending on sugar and they're weak. The dream you see for yourself can never be a reality until you start making it one. And so I also do see that instead of sitting here drinking coffee, I could have probably just done breath work because now I've become a slave to coffee. <laughs> Well, I wanted to be free. But when I just woke up, I just felt like all of this flooding into me. I mean, it's like, it's like a buzzing. And so if we speak about Satyagraha and what I have explained in the first session, civil disobedience, then it's not enough to just say, yes, we want this, because what would you want it for? Probably to hurt the people you think are on the other side. But for Satyagraha, you'd have to be in the middle. You are neither the oppressed nor the oppressor. You're the one standing in the middle between the oppressed and the oppressor and you're being formed into something new. Which is then the position Gandhi was in, of course, and it nearly took him apart. Which is why I'm trying to distance myself from these things because I don't want to be drawn too much into any kind of rebellion. So I don't want to be a rebellious leader. I just want to give you the information that you need to find peace in yourself. So that we stop being so dependent on other people to lead us. And we just learn to find it in ourselves. I think that's the, the next teaching of Satyagraha, that the nonviolent resistance, or whatever you think a revolution is, starts in your own self. Because if there's an imbalance and now you want, what is the word, retribution or something? Then you're just gonna create more. Let's just stick with the term violence, like, physical violence while what we want is peace and stability and if you're stuck on sitting in chairs and you cannot maintain an upright posture which I'm also struggling with
Retribution. Oh. Punishment inflicted on someone as vengeance for a wrong or criminal act. Settlers drove the Navajo out of Arizona in retribution for their raids. Late Middle English, also in the sense, recompense for merit or a service. Do you see this again? The words we use, how violent, I mean, how aggressive they are. Aggressive, you know, everything, all the words that we use have a negative connotation. So, retribution is here clearly stated as punishment inflicted on someone as vengeance for a wrong or criminal act. It's the same with animosity. It's the same with all kinds of words. Hostile. You can probably bring that back to host. So, in the sense, recompense for merit or service. And suddenly it's positive again. So what kind of a world do we live in here? You know, it's like we're living in the dark ages, in our minds. We have to change that. Because it's fake. It's absolutely fake. And so, yeah, coffee does wake me up if I drink it at the right moment. If I build up enough energy. So I almost go nuts without drinking that coffee and then I drink it and then I wait till the next day so it says like from late Latin retributio from retribute assigned again from the verb retribuere from re back and tribuere assign back assign which means is you're being given something and you give it back. So if somebody comes and punches you in the face, you know, you would then punch back. Or, and that's then the question, how do you want to repay this? So the state came and applied pressure on its people and said, hey, you know, that's one perspective, how you can see what happened during the so-called P-A-N-D-E-M-I-C. It's, let's say the state realizes the people are in distress, they need a solution, and then somebody comes and says, Let give, let's give him a solution. They want a solution, you know, they're like, you know, they really like shooting stuff into themselves. So let's give them that. You know, if they want to be addicts, we'll make them addicts. And then they got it. And then they say, oh, you forced us. <laughs> well, you obeyed. I mean, how much can you blame them? Well, they need money. Because everything's out of balance. And then they're forcing it out of you. Like, but you gave it. It's your own personal choice to give it. You gave it. So now you want to go and say, ah, now I'm going to destroy you it's not the way my friend because it was your personal choice to accept this so-called remedy if you would have sat at home and done this you would have never rushed around doing anything you would have said hey but i feel good like this no you have to take this but i feel good like this ah, okay if you feel good like this but just don't create problems for us, okay? We're trying to run the show here. You know, just enjoy. Use the electricity. Film yourself. Show the people how they can lead a better life. Practice your yoga. Show the people how to do it. Make your art. You know, drink your coffee if you like. Do whatever you want. You know, read books. Educate yourself. And then help us to bring this to the next phase. Because now the alternative we are being given is AI. And I'm sure it can be used for something, but I rather do it like this. But I'm also in an intermediary stage. I'm no longer a Viking, which is why, you know, I don't live here. I don't have to run around with an axe or a knife because, 
right? There are no wild animals. I don't need an axe to chop down trees or, you know, clear the path. I don't need any of that, so I can walk around without them. But I still want to know, you know, that I'm strong because I just don't know what's going to happen in my life. But at the same time, what I want is just to learn about channeling energy to holding my center because if I know how to hold my center, then other people can lean on that center. Which is why what's important to me is that I keep the energy flowing. Oh. So in a way, leaving this place often feels like a distraction to me. And then also, how do you sleep? I mean, I have shown you how I sleep on a mattress like this. I had to get used to this. Now it feels comfortable. And that's then Zen. To be comfortable in any situation. So to always be in the center, you know, it's neither good nor bad. It's just like, oh, that's how it is. You know, it's hard. And in order to be a real friend, you gotta be friendly. Which is why if you spend time with other people, and they start being vicious, then you can be vicious too. Or, you just say, hmm. I'll just be who I am. And that brings me back to a further question. I felt very drawn to this image on a t-shirt where there was this guy, like the Jesus figure, sitting in the middle of the table and then next to him was kind of his wife and they were like, I think, holding hands. And then you've got people on the left and you've got people on the right. And then, but, you know, this Jesus Christ figure was kind of for himself and it says, you can't chill with us. And I'm facing the reality of this. You can't chill with us, man. Because you're too much. And I have had this many times now. That if I'm too close, people start losing their minds. They could just get crazy. And so I just stay here. It's just such, just such a sad existence. I hate this. And so, yeah, I also do want to go back and play with everyone. I want to go back and smoke, smoke here, tobacco with weed. And it says, never smoke again. And then you're like, but why? No, why not? Why can't I just lead a normal life? Why do I have to sit here and be trapped indoors and have this kind of a vegetative existence? Why can't I just walk around and drink beer? And then says, yeah, well, try it. Okay, I have tried certain things. And they made me lose my mind. Like, literally. It came to the point where eating nugget bits completely pfft. like it haunted me for days and then you say this is so much nicer to a certain degree but at the same time you know should I live my life afraid to leave the house because that's how I often feel like like I feel very vulnerable if you understand what I mean because I'm open and it's just like open. I'm really open. And my mind is open. My heart is open. Which means I feel very vulnerable. If I walk around on the outside, I constantly feel like I'm being shot by people's energy. If somebody's full of hatred, I feel like he's shooting into me. And now I feel like clearly, I feel like leaving the house and getting some food like something else. You know, I want to drink some beer, I want to eat some nachos. But how often can I repeat these kinds of experiences? How often can I recreate what once felt kind of nice? Because last time I remembered, I came from the Boulder Hall
I bought beer and these peanut flips and I felt like, wow, wow, I feel like really good, like in heaven. And then I went back and then I drank the two beer and I ate the flips while listening to Greg Cave and then suddenly it just vanished. I mean, I knew I was just sliding further into whatever this experience is. But I just cannot identify solely with being just like that. It's very hard to identify with being just like that. Like center, never judge anyone, you know, read Gandhi and just read it like, like you're not you anymore, you're just this silent observer, never doing anything, never leaving the house, just sitting here channeling energy. Like, oh, it's just a fucking shit show, man. I mean, you want to be in the midst of it. So sure, Ragnar Lothbrok wanted more from life because it bored him. He had potential. And so he had this wife, Lagathar, but he also realized, well, shit's happening. I have to do something. And so he was seeking his own death. And so one thing he did was just get a second wife. And his first wife hated him for that. Well. So I also sometimes have a severe dislike for this feeling of happiness because I am apparently the only one who's really experiencing this. If I go into the shops and I buy things, then I can tell you what's happening. I go in there and I feel good myself, but I'm also like, you know, I'm like in a dissociative state, which is weird, really weird. I mean, I've met people in the shops when I was a bit like this, And as soon as I start engaging with them, everything starts to like dissolve. And so it's very hard because I never really know what's real. I mean, I do to a certain degree, but now I just drank that coffee. It just opened my mind and then stuff is just flowing. So sometimes it's better to just sit because I don't know what's happening on the outside. If I leave now and I go outside, then what is there? I mean, you clearly see that I feel anxious and agitated, that there's a lot of fear, that at the same time I hate being in here and at the same time I hate the idea of leaving the house now. But is this really me? Do I really have to be concerned? I mean, is it really the goal to just hide yourself away from these emotions? It's just too much. So I clearly don't know how you feel in your life. You may understand what I'm talking about. That you sometimes look at another human and you're just not sure what you see there. Or you're not sure what you're gonna see. And that's a very strange place to find yourself in if you feel like there's so much distrust. You know, if I drink a beer, what kind of portals do I open in myself? Because this is clearly a portal to something else. This is clearly a portal to something else. And also to someone else. So beer is clearly a portal to something else. And now I feel this severe greed for not so much the nugget bits, it is still there, but more like the, the peanut flips and beer.
but I just feel so out of place. And now the question is, where have I seen this before? I think I know one woman that feels a bit the same. Because there are people that have been born into the dissociative state. You know, I've always had this in my life that I was clinging for some time and then I just let go. So I remember walking with my friends and then we were walking up the hill and now it's interesting and I will tell you why I'm talking about these things. We were walking up a hill somewhere, I think it was, I, I remember there were trees and they were, we were all walking like really slow, like Whoa. and suddenly I was like, hey, <laughs> and I started jumping around and that was after a night of alcohol and no sleep. You know, we were all like, uh, and suddenly I was like, whoa. <laughs> so I always had these spontaneous moments of awakening, but sometimes it just takes a while to remember. And so sure, maybe it's the coffee. Maybe I should have done breath work. You know, how am I supposed to know? It's a weird place. I mean, I'm sitting here. It's cold. Most people would sit here and say, oh, it's so cold, let's turn on the heater. Ah! But we're in the middle of winter, my friend. And if we're in the middle of winter, then it should be a bit cold. I mean, you can be glad that it's not more cold. That it's not minus 14 degrees Celsius, but more like 10. And I'm also glad that it's raining instead of snowing. So, it's just strange. So understanding Gandhi's vision means you have to understand who you are and how you feel about what's going on in your surroundings. Because I cannot do your job, I'm doing mine, right? I'm connected to the people that know me and so you are connected to the people that know you. And so the most meaning I have is to the people that knew me since I was a child and then have connected with me in the real world. But I still don't trust anyone. I just don't trust anyone. And I've always been like this. Even as a child, I was always reserved with other people and everyone else, oh, why can't you just be friends? Because there are no real friends, man. There are no real friends. And that's what I've learned. Do you think little Ragnar Lothbrok had real friends? Do you think he was really friends with anyone? I mean, if you just look at the story, I mean, there was this stuff later with Floki, And that was just an act. I mean, nobody is like this. No, I can be like this, I can be like that. I can pick myself a character just to be different than other people. But how much different do you have to be? So I can identify with a version of myself that has no idea what's going on. because that's what people want to project onto me, and that's true. Or I can identify with my center and say, I think I've looked at it adequately. And if I've been betrayed too many times, and you just kept giving, giving me drugs, although you are my superior and you kept giving me drugs, then I cannot trust you, my friend. And then I will never trust you. No matter how much you try to flatter me with giving me your space and allowing me to do this or to do that, then I'd rather stay like in my own space, create my content, go to the boulder hall, upload it. And that's then what I choose. And then I'm just gonna stick in my center, do the things that work for me, and then just see what I need. 
Whatever that means. But I also feel that sometimes I feel like there's like women reaching out to me. And I just imagine and I realize, meh, meh. And then you say, well, that's very judgmental. Yeah, exactly. Because I have to choose. And I already chose. There's only exactly one woman that I'd ever want to be close with in my entire life ever again. And that's then what I choose. And so we come back to Brahmacharya. Because if you want to experience peace for Satyagraha, you have to have inner peace and balance, which is why... Gandhi always tested himself very strongly. And so, if you want to have inner balance, then you have to learn how to stabilize yourself every day for the rest of your life. Which means that at one point you will realize, instead of running around and having sex with all kinds of women, because that always takes you away from yourself, you just want to be the center. And then when a woman comes, then she's the right one. Because that's then the woman that can be in your center. And every other woman will just have to stay away. And that's why there are people where I simply say, nope. I have a real problem because tomorrow, at least I have invited, you know, my family, I already know, for a yoga workshop, and that's a real stretch for me. So I'm asking myself how to prepare myself, because my brother has this weird habit of always, like, this hugging habit, and I hate it. I just don't know how to get out of it. And I'm wondering if I have to set these boundaries. But I feel like if I would, I'd just be alone all the time. And I'd put myself on a pedestal and act like I'm some kind of god. Which I sometimes feel like truly I am. Because if you spend a lot of time alone, in oneness, you experience such states of bliss that you cannot help but see yourself as different from others. But what we also cannot forget is that there is family, I have been born into this world, and if my brother comes, we're gonna have a short embrace. I mean, that can also give stability. But I just don't know, man. So, what is Satyagraha to me? It's finding inner balance. And that's what I'm trying to do. I have to make clear distinctions between family and then wife and then everyone else. So I cannot become who people want me to be, but I have been born into a family and with family I will be close, closer than with other people. That's the choice I have made. And so I stay away from people that like to be friends because I want to be with family. And as in the case with Gandhi, his concept of family started to grow the more people he invited into his heart space. And of course also we're living in an ashram, which is a commune for certain amounts of time. But at this stage, everything is simply too 
too radical for me. I like peace. And so for me, it's all about transitions, but it's also about the woman I fell in love with. So to keep her safe, I have to keep myself safe. And I have to be open for her to reach out to me. And if that never happens, then I will lead this life till the end. At the same time, I still feel like I would like to smoke. And then the question is, you know, it's like, I just don't know, man. And that's what, you know, how difficult this is, Satyagraha, nonviolent resistance. Because I'm just in the middle of some kind of process. I'm still finding myself. I cannot lead anyone because I don't know what you're supposed to do. You have to know what you're supposed to do. So what I'm doing and what my life is about is telling you to be self-responsible because that's what people are missing and that's what they were missing when all these things were being pushed upon them. They were always looking for someone else. You know, you look at the Bible, you look at these words, you look at the Quran, you look at some kind of messiah. But what's yourself, man? What are you? What's your center? That's what spirituality is about. So I follow no religion, but I ha can find clues in religion. I can find clues in what Gandhi is talking about. But then I have to also reflect upon it or project it onto these times. So I read this and it becomes my mirror. If I read this and it annoys me, then the question is why? Because he was struggling too much against his position. So he wanted to be third class, but he was like more like the middle, right? If he would have been true to who he is, he would have just gone into the middle. And that's what an adult would have done. But the child wanted to play around in third class. So if I'm in the middle, then I know who my wife is. If I want to play and fuck around, then I'll go somewhere else. But then I would have to sacrifice this here. And that's what I know. So in the middle, I know who I am. I know who my wife is. I know what I got to do, which is I have no time for friends. I'm devoted to the woman that has been placed in my heart space and I just got to keep loving her and so she's got to keep loving me but I don't know who she is in herself I know who I am in myself and I feel devotion towards this woman and that's what is true because I've tested it many a time it always came back. And so understanding Gandhi's vision is understanding your own vision, is distancing yourself from Gandhi's vision and just finding your own way. And then also saying, well, I would rather lead a life together with my wife and do things together and spend time doing yoga and tantra together and then raising our children than to run away from this heart connection and try to give to as many people as I can. You know, I'm doing this through the internet. And if you want more, you just got to take it from yourself, man. Nobody came and gave me shit. I just worked hard to be in my center. And sure, there's people that occasionally contact me and then they want to go hiking with me and I just say, go hiking yourself, man. If you want to go hiking, go fucking hiking. I'm not going to be your daddy. I'm not going to be your friend. I want to live my own life. And I have a very ugly side. I have a very ugly side. Like, I have a very ugly side. You don't know how ugly I can be, my friend. I can be very ugly. And I need to be to protect my inner child because I've seen what happens if you walk around and think there's friends. Well, you have to look at these friends. How do they portray themselves? Who are they really? 
you know, I was on the verge of being destroyed. People would have killed me. Because they realized they cannot control me. So they wanted to kill me. And that's the truth. So to me, nonviolent resistance, I cannot do this. It's not my life. So I simply stay on my side. And if you have anxieties and you want money, well, then you've got to find out a way how to get that. Because I've seen what you do with your money, which is wasted on alcohol, amphetamines, and cannabis. And then you try to buy friends with this. Sorry. It's out of the question, man. You cannot spend time with someone like this anymore. As much as he may want this, but then he has to figure it out for himself because such a man cannot be trusted. He has to learn how to trust himself first. Because I have been hurt too much. Too many times have I been injured, emotionally, just thrown away and discarded. So I simply said, fuck it. <laughs> no. I have many no's in myself. And that's then a yes clear yes to myself. So I just started to get bored with this. And now it says love, okay? I accept the interpretation of Ahimsa, namely that it is not merely a negative still. I'm just gonna keep this to myself. If I wanna read this, I'm gonna do so. But at the moment, what I wanna learn about is more like the Viking spirit. Because a Viking also fought for himself, you gotta have your own dream, or why else would you continue to live? Like, you cannot live for my dream, you gotta live for your own dream. Because that's the world that we live in at the moment. It's whatever the nuclear family is, it's like we have small families that have to live in balance. And I really want to be selfish with my wife. <laughs> That's just how I feel like. And I even got to be selfish with her. And that's just how I feel like. Because people can be sucked dry. And in the center, everything feels true. And I still don't know. Every time I think I know, it's fading away. Everything I know who this is, this woman that I love, I feel like it's someone else. And then I make up these stories in my mind of what's really real, so I cannot lead anyone, man. but I can lead myself. Now I'm still here and I'm still talking. So I'm clinging. I'm clinging and clinging and clinging. And it's just a weird way to end this understanding Gandhi's vision. Because it's just too big. I have my own vision and I just gotta keep myself together because everything changes all the time. I know that there is something weird going on in this city and I'm not sure how to deal with this. So Satyagraha is also to be non-violent towards myself. So violence in the same of, in the sense of emotional, physical, you know, the wish to harm oneself. Does drinking alcohol harm me? can't help it, just don't know. There's something strange, very strange. So to me, whatever spirituality is, 
is a very scary place. Like life is a very scary place. Drinking coffee clearly feeds the shadow and then I have to work on my life. So you want to talk to me to Satyagraha in a system that is completely dependent on substances like sugar and coffee and that imprisons animals into like whatever you see in the milk industry and the meat industry. Sorry, but what is Satyagraha in all of this? Where we just cut down trees like they're nothing. I'm sure that the Vikings still had a sense of the truth, like trees as living beings and animals as living beings. So there's got to be a lot of respect. But I just don't see the respect any longer. And in a way, smoking is a form of disrespect because unnecessary. And I've tested it. There's no benefit to smoking. But at the same time, I still feel like I want it. But that's again like taking something and relaxing while I feel like, you know, what is there to relax about? So I'd rather do this and I'd rather go bouldering to get myself to another high. <laughs> than to smoke myself into another high. And instead of just like, I always lose it. Every time I hear, I start to lose it. Stuff starts piling up. And that's why the individual has to make choices first in their own lives and cleanse themselves of all these addictions, of all this clinging, of all this... Ah! You know, you have to work yourself out of your own melodrama. So instead of relying on your parents or anyone else, you got to take responsible for your emotional and spiritual well-being. Which is why I said, I feel good, but I also have to do something for that. I have to open up. That's why I choose this experience now. And I stay here. Then I'm gonna render this video. But it's still a stretch. But I just don't want to go back to the old me. But it's always a stretch. It's always an act of courage to first stay inside and then leave again. So, every time I feel like I'm being drawn towards another woman, I can just say, nope. I can even go today to the boulder hall and then just not go on Sunday. Because if I feel like there's going to be a woman there on Sunday that wants me there, then maybe I should just stay away. Because I just don't want to have anything to do with her. Maybe I'm just running away from her. Into the ideas of the fantasy. I just can't help it. Just never felt more love for anyone. It wasn't just the physical thing, it was just the love I felt for her. I just feel like it has never been returned. And so who 
do I have to be? If I don't see who my wife is, then how can I be a man? It's just too difficult. Maybe I'm really being deluded by my own self. <sighs> so find your own center. Do what works for you and then see where you fit in. Now I'm here and I just see how I can fit in here while I'm here. Because I also got to live. I also got to eat. I also got to do what I need to do. And that's what I feel like. And I've got a good nose. And today I do feel like I should ground myself. Go get some beer. Go get some flips. And just let it all go. Because what I hate the most is being some kind of phony idiot. Because now I'm just clinging so much. I'm just clinging to this, to this idea that I've created here. And I hate nothing more than to be stuck. So if I go on Sunday and there's gonna be another woman but I'm in love with someone else, then what I can do is show her that nothing's gonna happen. And then it's maybe just her fear that I could go back to this other woman. I'm just devoted. Because the sex we had meant more to me than the sex I ever had with anyone else in my entire life. And that's a clear sign. And I'm willing to sacrifice sex for this woman, if she were to decide never to see me again. And that's then what I do. And so I just keep myself alive. I see that I continue to move on. Of course, I can sit here and breathe myself. But sometimes I feel like it is good to simply let yourself slide. And just make a new experience for the shamanic <laughs> shamanic diary of a yogi. And then just see how you feel. Because this will never be real to me. I want the felt experience. I want to live life. I think that was what Gandhi was about. He wanted to be in the midst of things. He wanted to be with the people that suffered. But he also wanted to do this so he can bring back experiences and say, hey, that's how the people that we push into the third class, that's how they live. So that others can live like super high. So now we're back with Gandhi, thank God. Jesus, do you see how hard this is? To work yourself back to understanding why he did this? How long it takes me to understand his perspective? So if you want to understand my perspective, yeah man, you got to be devoted, my friend. And that's what Ramnas was about. And so I think I can listen to Ramnas again just to ground myself a little and to acknowledge the fact that there are other people who experience life. If this were... This is the sword of the... whatever century this is. It's the Vok. It's the kitchen man. It's the chef. Different times, man. You know, you gotta stay true to yourself. And this is what I do to get back my center. You know, I make a choice. I chose to do it like this, yeah? 
I chose to wear the hat like this, and then I fiddled around and I stopped. I chose this woman and I stick with it because it got me to where I am here now. Every time I felt uncertain, I wondered what she would do or what she would like me to do. And then I acted accordingly. So I realized, hmm, I think she wants me to be true and to be happy. <laughs> and sure, I can be afraid that she will go around and do things with other men. And I hate the fact and it makes me incredibly angry, but how do I know? Well, there were times where she did tell me that she kissed someone else, that she... But these may be just words, where she told me that there was another man who did like energy work with her. And so, just don't like this. And I feel like she's just too far away. And that's torture. Believe me, it just feels like torture. And so, I just don't know anymore. And that's what I've said. But what I know now is, I think Gandhi did have a point. The reason he wanted to be in third class, in the third class compartment, was to have the experience and to see how it feels like, so he can talk about it. And that's my point. The only real thing you can talk about is your emotions. So if I read books about the Viking spirit, then I have to go and make my experiences, then I have to go and find Thor in my own life, then I have to go and find what god I would like to worship in my life. And then I see that the god I worship is clearly nature, which is why I was looking for a woman, like, intuitively, that would be the best reflection of myself so that would be according to my nature, which probably is like a bit hot-headed, active, self-responsible in some way, but also has the wish to like cling to each other. Because that's what Tantra is clearly about. It's like clinging to each other and wanting to spend a lot of time together. So Brahmacharya for me is an intermediary stage, a transitionary state towards family life, husband and wife, and then children, and then family, and then seeing how we feel like it should go, whether this should grow at some point into some kind of commune, but I think not. I think we can do this together as long as we're here because people will have to figure it out for themselves because they clearly have different ideas and I'm sick of being used I'm sick of being used I'm sick of being pulled away from each other and so I just focus on the family that we have there will be then family gatherings and I think that's what we should focus on. And maybe that's what Gandhi should have done. But he just wanted to be enlightened. Yeah. He wanted to save his people. Well, he could have done it small. He wanted to do the big thing. But how much of the stuff that he did really lasted? How many of the ashrams that he created stuck around? He could have spent more time with his brother, spent more time with his wife, but instead he always ran around into friends and stuff. And I simply said, I like the idea of having one partner. I once watched a documentary about... Now we're coming towards Satyagraha, my friend. Yes, why it's for the individual. 
this is Gandhi's truth. You gotta find yours. Because what I saw was and what inspired me and what really made something click in me was when I watched a documentary about a couple that was interested in volcanoes. And they were traveling the world, visiting volcanoes, and that was husband and wife. And they shared the same passion, they loved it. And so I have a love for movement in all kinds of ways. I do like teaching, but I'm very reserved. Like, you gotta maintain your own space, man. If you cannot come into mine, this is my wife's and my space, right? The times where people will be here is gonna be very limited. And that's what I like. Because I've seen people who constantly invited other people into their lives and their families were far from doing good. Their children were feeling neglect. I have been with ayahuasca shamans and their family was in a very bad state because they were too dependent on this ayahuasca. So they worshiped the plant instead of life itself. So they had like two weeks Every two weeks they would do an ayahuasca ceremony and every, you know, every time it was done they were looking for the next one. Instead of, you know, spending time with their son, spending time with their daughter, they just spend time with ayahuasca. And so I just want to change that. So, we don't all have to drink, but it helps you to connect then you can do this. So maybe that's all I have to do. Maybe drinking alcohol is running away now. Because if I maybe choose the path of a yogi, and maybe I have to stay true to this, it's just so difficult. Because it's just so lonely. Until it is not. So now I have to choose who to attract into my life. And I think that's people who want to be... No phonies. I think that's people who want to simply also sober up a little. And then do things like this. So I first gotta do things myself. And that includes figuring out how I like to move. <sighs> and then simply move. But I've already done so much. You keep asking yourself, what more should I do? How often should I do this? But I clearly do realize that these things are important to me and so I keep practicing and I do feel like I have become more and more strong the further I've got and so I build these things up I train these And then I just have to see what's going to come out of it. And what I've realized is that people always want to portray me like I'm a fake. Like I've met people who clearly fail to understand how somebody can give all of this without wanting something. Oh, he just does it for the money or he just does it for this. No, it keeps me alive, man. And if you don't see this, then you're an idiot. You're restricted with your own perspective. And even if I do it to earn money, then what's the problem, man? If that's my job, you know, I'm not just nice, I'm in the middle, which is, I have a goal and I have to work hard to get there, which is like, I'm a beast. Yeah, but I can't be friendly. If you stop to respect me, then I will just walk away. And that's just what I've done. 
And so it's irrelevant to me what you think, what you feel, because what you have to decide is what you have to decide. So satyagraha is a word, and it means firm truth. And if it means firm truth, then you got to find this in yourself. you got to find stability, learn how to be strong, and then say, that's what I see from my perspective. Right? And so you stop running around, you stop asking for opinions, you just find your own position on the chessboard. And then you realize that you yourself are the chessboard. You yourself are the chessboard. And every piece is a part of yourself. And that includes the black side and the white side. And what you're doing ultimately is always playing against yourself. And if you feel like you're being forced by something to like, ah, you know, be aggressive, then you have to soothe yourself and you have to say, oh, wow, that's whatever side in myself, there's an imbalance, so you work it out. So that when you have children or you already have them, whatever, you can stop shouting at them and you make amends, which is why the next time then you come together with your wife, it's going to be peaceful and it's not going to be like pounding into her. Yeah, no more of that. It's going to be gentle. It's going to be in a sitting position and she's going to come and sit in your lap and you can hold her. And you breathe into this, you connect with each other and then she can also take over. And sure, you know, this can be like push and pull, you know, maybe she wants you to lay on the ground or something and to just marvel at her beauty and at her strength because riding a man, like really riding him and also guiding him is also something that a woman should be able to do. It's not just about the man, like, sure. You can have missionary, I think it's nice. Sometimes the man is in charge, sometimes the woman. It's gonna be an inter, you know, it's, it's gonna be changes. It's not always the man and the woman. It's like the man and the woman. And so you gotta have sex like real humans, like consciously feeling that sensation, you know, of being touched. Of, you know, the kissing, like, is a real sensation. You can really take the time until you feel like now it's time to move on from the kissing, you know, and like, whew, really flow into each other. And that's just what I know in my heart. But the reality still has to teach me. And so until then, I'm just keeping myself clean, stay away from masturbation, I wait until the moment comes and gives me this kind of a love. And that's hard. And so focus and attention, observe, then find your center. This is how I find my center, by doing this kind of work, by talking myself through these things. So I work with what I read, and if I fail to understand why Gandhi did what he did, then I have to sit down and work on that, because if I hate another man for his choices, then there's clearly something in me clinging to thinking that I know or whatever. And so I work forward to being myself again, so that I can say, okay, that was his position. I think my position is a bit different. You know, I don't have to always jump into the pit because I've already done that, I've already been there. I can stay in the middle and then I stay with people that want to also come forward and where I know that they worked it out for themselves and that's the only people that could ever live together in a commune. So if that should ever be a part of my life, then it only works with people that have done the work already, so that I don't have to be like some kind of father figure who stands there and says, this is how it's going to be. No, because you've done your work, I've done my work, we both know what our, our job is, and then we do the damn job, and then we can make choices together, or whatever. 
Because to me, it's too damn hard. I cannot do everything right. Whatever I have, maybe it's a vision. I also need help. And so for me, Satyagraha starts in yourself. It starts in yourself. But there may be one person who sees the whole thing because his mind has been opened. So he sees the whole thing and then he knows what needs to be done. And that can be directed in spirit so that he doesn't have to run around always and find all these people. So sure, today, I don't know. I still feel like I want chips and beer. But I think at the moment it's better to be devoted to yoga. I assume, right? Because if there is someone who may be like guiding, then he has to make choices and he has to be really like... Because that's, as a content creator, you can become like an idol. And that means you have to also take responsibility. And if you realize that beer is more a distraction from yourself, then it's better to just not drink it and to just see what you have and then use it. Okay, so I think we have talked about Satyagraha. It is confusing. Um, it's one step at a time. No day is the same for me anyway. But I'm starting to get better. If I stick to certain practices. But I still feel like so many things that I could do. But at the same time, I also begin to enjoy being here. And being on my own and being there for the people emotionally. And so I can look forward to Sunday and stay inside today and just be like a pillar and just keep this open space, emotional open space, because it is like a spiritual world. And there are two sides. There's the sides, side that calls you on your phone. And then there's like the emotional space that you can create where people can step into when they connect with you. And so creating content on YouTube is not just about filming yourself and like putting up a smile and then being the greatest dick in the universe, you know, you can say on YouTube, yeah, I don't masturbate. And then as soon as the camera's off, you're like, ah, ah. yeah. So if you're true, then people will feel it. And that's it. That's how I feel like. So, you know, truth, whatever. I never said that I will never smoke again, at least not yet. And I never said I will never drink alcohol again. If I do, I will do it myself, probably on my own. If I do, then I will just see where it gets me. But I feel like right now it's okay. Yeah, it's too difficult. This is enough. It's just from my perspective. Find your own. You know, Satyagraha, okay, understanding Gandhi's vision. He was in the middle of it. That's the message. He was in the middle of it. He was living it. He was trying to be as real as he could be. So it took him some time to come to the understanding that Brahmacharya is for him. 
Um, if I want to be true to myself, then why not drink the alcohol? Well, that's a choice you have to make for yourself. I think that's the best thing anyone can tell you. You got to choose for yourself whether you want to drink alcohol or not. Sometimes I feel like I got to booze through and just see where I land. And so I'm on the verge, I think, of doing this. But maybe I'm not. So now I have laundry, so I have to take care of these things. These daily chores also keep me busy, keep me from being too phony. I don't want to be this super enlightened guy. You know, I got to find myself, whatever. Keep moving, keep on rowing, see where you land, and then keep making choices. It's very hard. It's like fairyland. <sighs> Yeah, Ooh, and it's cold in here, so I gotta stay warm. It's cold in here, so I gotta stay warm. And that's the best workout. The best workout. So yoga is about yourself. Yoga is about yourself. And if I do this, maybe I don't have to drink alcohol no more. And hop, hop. Strength, that's strength. 